And if that doesn't get you in the mood for a last 16 European Championship clash, then nothing will. This time in 24 hours, our attention will be firmly at Wembley. And it's not just England who will be hoping the old adage about teams growing into tournament rings true at Euro 2020. After a sluggish start in their first two games, Croatia showed glimpses of the form that took them to the World Cup final by ending Scotland's knockout dreams at Hamden last week. As for Spain, well, they fear group stage elimination after failing to beat either Sweden or Poland. But a five-star showing against Slovakia has got their fans dreaming of being crowned European champions for a record-breaking fourth time. Trevor Sinclair alongside me. These two may not be the forces they once were, but is it dangerous to write them off? 100%. Um, I think just the, the sheer amount of possession which the Spanish side dictate in games. And obviously we've just seen the rendition of their national anthem, uh, you know, with Croatia. And I played with a couple of Croatians who were very successful, Davos Suka and Igor Stimac. They're as patriotic as people come, so the Croatians can't be discounted. I'm really looking forward to this game. 25 degrees heat, full, almost full stadium. It looks absolutely fantastic. All set up for a great 16 knockout game. Very colourful around the park and stadium. Those Croatian supporters who've travelled en masse to Scandinavia in their red and white checks, outnumbering their Spanish counterparts, and it's Luka Modric's fan club that are making most of the noise before kickoff. A quarter final against either France or Switzerland, who play later live on Talk Sport, await the victors of this tie in the quarter finals in St. Petersburg. But will it be Modric's Croatia? or Busquets Spain who continue on their European journey two changes for both managers both of them in force as far as Croatia are concerned Lovren is suspended and no Perisic due to that positive Covid test so Chaleta Saar comes in at the back with Rabic replacing Perisic in midfield a big call from Luis Enrique Jordi Alba dropped to the bench by Spain Jose Gallar comes in at left back while Ferran Torres of Manchester City takes the place of Gerard Moreno in attack. We are just about set for kickoff on a glorious summer's evening and it will be Spain all in white shooting from left to right in this first half we get us underway. Croatia in their all black chain strip attacking the goal away to our left and it is Spain who get proceeding started. The two lineups in full Croatia have Livakovic in goal. Juranovic keeps his place at right back alongside Chaleta Saar, Vida and Guardiol in defence. Brozovic and Kovacic will sit deepest in midfield. Certainly when Croatia don't have the ball. Modric in front of them. Vlasic and Rabic either side of Petkovic up front for Spain. Simon in goal. Apel Equator, Garcia, Laporte and Gaiar in front of him. Koke, Busquets, the talented teenager Pedri in midfield with Sarabia, Morata and Torres up front and Spain in possession with Aymeric Laporte and he made 14 Premier League starts last season for Manchester City Laporte Garcia alongside him couldn't get a game really no. under Pep Guardiola that could be an area maybe that Croatia could look to exploit yeah the two that played in front of them did okay though didn't do too bad the <laughs> trick I'll give you that one here is Laporte, very slow tempo early on here, Spain dominating possession, Coco plays it back inside the centre circle to Garcia. Set to return to Barcelona on July the 1st, Garcia. And we've played almost a minute and a half, Trevor Sinclair and Croatia haven't really got a kick yet, the ball swept out his right hand side to Apel Equator and he just taps it down the edge of the penalty area, picked up again by the Chelsea right fullback. And Spain go back to the halfway line. Yeah, deep block. Uh, they realise it early on in the game. It's quite warm. They don't want to be spending energy. Oh, good ball from the port. Oh, scooped over the top and really sharp goalkeeping from Livakovic racing out to the edge of the penalty area with a lovely lofted pass. And the goalkeeper had to get there. Yeah, Livakovic on his toes there, nice and sharp out of his six yard area into the depth of the 18 yard box to, to catch cleanly. Nice and alert. So long punt up field by Croatia, flicked on by Petkovic. You can expect to see plenty of that going direct. On this occasion, it's picked up inside the Spain 18 yard box by Unai Simon, the athletic Bilbao goalkeeper. 
referred to Manchester United's David De Gea as Spain's number one for this tournament. Luis Enrique proven already that he isn't afraid to make the big call. Here's Garcia just stepping towards halfway for Spain. Those Croatian fans who've made the trip in fine voice yeah. early on here. Nil nil. You're listening to Talk Sport. Alex Crook and Trevor Sinclair. Another busy night of European action. France against Switzerland to come. And don't forget this time tomorrow. England against Germany. As if you could forget. Live from Wembley Stadium. What a game that will be. Here is Ivory Laporte on the edge of the Spanish penalty area. Croatia content to let Spain dictate the ball early on it's with their left back Jose Gallar captain of his hometown club Valencia he's actually unbeaten in a Spain shirt and now preferred to Jordi Alba on the left hand side of that back four here's Laporte again with the reverse pass out this right hand side it's controlled on the chest by his Manchester City teammate Ferran Torres have to be impressed with the way that Spain are moving the ball mm. early on well that's why it makes sense when you can play a left footed left central defender as soon as he gets it out of his feet he's got that reverse cross field ball picked out his winger really well there Ferran Torres took it on his chest and they keep the move alive another thing is because goalkeepers are so good with their feet now unless you overcommit, you can't get anywhere near the ball when you play against a really technical side like this so you might as well have a deep block but they've got to be more careful when they get the ball back and not just go long here's Torres in the pink footwear trying to tee up that fellow Quaid who made the overlapping run just behind the very experienced Chelsea defender is out for a throw in for Croatia which will be taken by Josko Guardiol one of the emerging Croatian stars in this tournament 19 year old playing this trade with Dinamo Zagreb who beat Tottenham in the Europa League I heard they call him uh, Mini Pep is it? it's he just looked, because of his surname isn't he it? Looked, he looked well built so it can't be nothing to do with his stature <laughs> Spain have the ball with Koke right Touchline as we look, and that's a foul by Brozovic. Maybe a frustrated tackle there on Alvaro Morata and a free kick midway inside the Croatian half of the third away to our right. Yeah, so technical. Really good first touch by Morata. Just trying to slide his studs on top of the ball just to slip it by the oncoming defender. Good skill, got taken out. Changes position for a free kick. He's going to have to be careful, Marcelo Brozovic. One of three Croatian players, one booking away from suspension. In fact, both the Deep line midfield players, Brozovic and Kovacic, are treading that disciplinary tightrope. It's a free kick, which will be taken either by Koke or by Sarabia coming in from the right hand side. I think it will just be chipped around about the penalty spot. Not a bad delivery. Flicked up in the air by Ferran Torres. Croatia should have enough black shirts back to deal with the danger. That wasn't a convincing header by Vida though. Playing his way into trouble inside the penalty chain. And a deep cross to far post. Looking for Torres. Knows it down inside the area. Koke couldn't quite bring it under control. And Croatia just about clear their lines. This is impressive from Spain, Trevor Sinclair. Yeah, they started on the front foot. Looking after the ball. Getting the passage, passages of play going. You can see there's lots of patterns that they've worked on. And I, when I always talk, talk about the Spain team, the Spanish side, I always talk about futsal and how they have like 20, 25 different patterns of play. I think that has started to go into their national team as well and you know from the goalkeeper different movements different triggers to get into different positions to get your patterns of play and your passages of play going this was good play I think there was a foul but advantage was given and the ball just landed behind Koke he was hoping to get a little side volley side winder going there but he was just out of his reach and he wasn't enough to, able to get enough purchase on the ball but yeah really positive play getting the ball down and getting the little patterns of play going Spain Yoshko Guardiol wasn't happy there with the challenge from Torres as he headed the ball down inside the area was gesticulating to the Turkish referee Kunait Shakir that maybe he was caught by an elbow he is back I think on his feet now I think there'll be plenty of that Cookie, you know, I think it, you've got to do that when you're playing against a team that's superior to you. If you just stand off them and be passive, they'll pass you to death and they'll end up beating you handsomely. You have to get a little bit of contact, not hurting people, but you have to leave a footing now and again and let them know you're there, just to keep them honest, so they don't take liberties. Here comes Gaillard down the left-hand side for Spain. Nil-nil with seven minutes played here on Talk Sport. So clever, Busquets. One and two touch passing, little ones without down the corner. This guy's passing nightmare to play against turns 33 this summer Sergio Busquets missed the first couple of games of the tournament due to Covid but 
was really impressive on his comeback against Slovakia and that will be a key area won't it Push gets against Luka Modric the two genuine stars on display as Livakovic under pressure from two Spanish players inside the six yard box clears it right footed upfield they still can't get the foothold Croatia to the port well forward he's been dispossessed and maybe now they can counter attack but again Spain win it back in double quick time they are down the left hand side infield for Coco great intensity I think both teams will be used to these kind of conditions what 25 degrees temperature but Spain this is right in their pocket you know perfect conditions for them what they're used to and they understand let the ball do the work you know all this possession that they're having now the Croatian players are having to run around to try and keep the shape and keep any gaps from opening up and they're doing that really well but this will be fatiguing straight away having to do little sprints 10 yard sprints here and there you can hear the jeers from the Croatian fans as Spain continued to monopolise the ball and Ferran Torres has been bundled over another free kick within crossing range here and again it was Marcelo Brozovic just clipping Torres from behind yeah I think Kovacic's got a little bit of that as well just made sure he didn't get past him he was a meat in the sandwich wasn't he <laughs> Ferran Torres he's got an impressive goal scoring record for Spain 7 in 14 caps netted with his first touch against Slovakia in that crucial victory in the final group game it's going to be Koke to swing in the court, the free kick right footed and headed goalwards but off balance and fell equator and a tame header in the end into the arm of Livakovic it does remains 0-0 does that go down as a shot on target from Cesar I think it has to well no wonder they've had 48 shots <laughs> <laughs> I mean it would have had to be some header off balance to beat Livakovic right from the edge of the penalty area and he's not renowned for that is he and fell equator but it's a sign of Spain's early domination that he found himself so well forward to attack that free kick still goalless though in Copenhagen France against Switzerland to come later and a double header tomorrow night England against Germany from Wembley live on Talk Sport that's a 5 o'clock kick off at 8 o'clock on Talk Sport 2 the final last 16 game between Sweden and Ukraine the winners of that will play either England or Germany in the quarter finals England in that favourable half of the draw the same can't be said of the two teams we're watching here Croatia and Spain if they are either of them to win the trophy they're going to have to do it the hard way Koke nods it down midway inside his own half still goalless and the equator plucks the ball from the scunny, uh, sunny skies overhead but it's won back by Guardiola and then that it's a nasty challenge from Busquets I think it was Eric Garcia from behind as well again it was a double up job <laughs> we certainly seen some challenges <laughs> early on Trevor yeah no quarters given here you can see a Garcia was the player game. who was called over I mean, Busquets had a nibble he's caught him as well but certainly the more firm contact was from Garcia baby face assassin foul on Petkovic and Modric clever free kick scooped over the top to Guardiol Guardiol down the left hand side crosses deep to the far post over the head of Petkovic and headed away not too convincingly by Gaillard Croatia really for the first time trying to put some pressure on this Spanish back line in the end they have to settle for conceding a throw high up the pitch but you saw there hmm. the speed of thought from Luka Modric just to scoop the free kick over the top and release Guardioli such a clever player yeah, the ball goes dead can you come alive can you catch the opposing team out he's looking even before he gets anywhere near the ball is anyone making a movement Guardiola goes down the left hand side he dicks a little ball over the top and it's a good ball into the box a little danger sign there for the Spanish he's already Croatia's record appearance holder Luka Modric in terms of international appearances he's now their record appearance holder at major tournaments 13th European Championship appearance for the former Tottenham man former Ballon d'Or winner yeah and the man really who dragged Croatia kicking and screaming into the last 16 with that superb individual display against Scotland at Hamden I think when you were his teammates past and, 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 and now speak about him I think that tells its own story you know whether they played with him 10-15 years ago or they're playing with him now they all, they all say the same thing you know quality works his socks up for the team technically something like they've never seen before so talented and you know you, you understand why he was split both Messi and Ronaldo in that Ballon d'Or here's Gaillard attacking down the left hand side crossing into the area ok beaten to the punch by Kovacic who just smashes the ball out of play into that crowd of Croatian supporters over on the far touch line Gaillard yeah. with a throw good defensive organisation from the Croats there you can see they're all set up not too many big gaps 
not just laterally across the pitch but also the midfield nice and deep so there's not too many gaps in between now Busquets midway inside the Croatian half into Morata inside the penalty area and then blasted into the side netting decent enough effort from Sarabia but I'm not convinced it was necessarily the right course of action maybe Morata could have got the ball out from under his feet quicker but the cross should have come in from Sarabia yeah brilliant play again Buscats looks like he's going to take a shot from about 25 yards out puts loads of disguise on it little slip ball down the left inside area Morata's first touch is good he gets out of his feet he realizes he's not got the angle so he lays it off and yeah Sarabia he could have chose better there he's got a ridiculous angle from about 15 yards out and he's gone for the near post and hits it into the side netting here comes Spain again up the equator infield to Koke Croatia pin back inside their own half of the field 13 minutes gone on talk sport nil nil the score they are down the left hand side now and Laporte so comfortable stepping out from the back has possession high up the field this is Koke more booze from those Croatian supporters and then another clumsy foul by yeah. Brozovic that's the third time Brozovic in the opening 14 minutes Busquets this time the player upended I'm not sure he wants to play in the quarter final Brozovic if <laughs> Croatia get there <laughs> he might have some plans I think, listen, uh, Busquets, I think we'll be having a word, Koke will be having a word with the referee, saying, listen, how many times are you going to let him get away with that? They're he's, not he's, nasty fouls, but they're the type of fouls, Trevor, I'd imagine, that just annoy you. Yeah, they he's do a pest, annoy you. Isn't he? Yeah, they are, they are, and I think once he gets spoken to again, it'll either be in the book or they'll pass it on, then somebody else will have, to have that job to do in the quiet team. Koke with the ball forward, looking for Morata. Beaten in the air by the left-back Guardiol. Guardiol with a chance to clear up towards the halfway line, but sliding in again was Busquets in the lime green boots. And it's a toe on the ball to poke it out for a throw. Luis Enrique, very casual, the Spain coach, white trainers, blue jeans, white shirt. Why not? 25 degrees, you don't want to put a suit on, do you? And both managers... Uh, have elected to ditch the jackets. In fact, Croatia turned up for the game wearing trainers and shirts. That was suddenly adopted before beating Scotland and decided to stick with it. But superstition having worn suits for their first two matches, which were underwhelming. Rabbit's there, good opportunity to, to play a ball in. Just got his angle of his uh, slip ball wrong, or else it could have been danger for Spain. I'd like to bit a punch Croatia so far in this game. 15 minutes gone, 0-0. 85% possession again to Spain. Here's Morata out to the right hand side. That's been the story of Spain's tournament so far. Their issue is they haven't always been able to turn that territorial domination into goals. No. Although, of course, they did against Slovakia in that final game with a little bit of help from Martin Dubravka, the Newcastle keeper. Well, the resilience is going to be tested from this quite back line and the midfield to keep working, keep believing, not let your head drop. Here they come again. Koke, he's free inside the penalty area, side foots it. Good save by Livakovic, but Koke should have done an awful lot better. The Croatian back line torn to shreds again by the clever movement from Koke. Needed just to put his foot through it, try to guide it into the corner, and in the end, it was a fairly comfortable save from Livakovic with the outstretched right boot. Yeah, it was a great run as well. You know, out to him from the right to left. Received the ball centrally on his favourite foot. He's got the goal gaping there and he hits it straight at the goalkeeper. Poor finishing, but big opportunity and big warning sign there. Sarabia with a short corner. Gets it back from Garcia. Hoisted in left-footed and headed behind again by Guardiol. Livakovic grateful for the big left-back there. But it's a second Spanish corner in quick succession. All the action at that Croatian end of the ground in Copenhagen so far. Sarabia again with a corner, again he's going to go short, rolls it to the edge of the area this time and it's poked out by Ferran Torres to Garcia but he undercooked the pass and Luka Modric the captain back heals it under pressure on the touchline to Brozovic, that is as cool as you like from Modric. Yeah but that's utilising your skill set uh, and not in a, in a, a, a show off way, he didn't have any options and to turn and make that pass with his instep would have took too long it was the right thing to do and it, you know he executed it well found a teammate excellent play from Modric once again here's Guardiol again gives possession away cheaply on the touchline Ferran Torres forward to Morata dropping deep little back heel from him this time and then Koke switches the play out the left hand side Gaillar and Pedro almost got in each other's way picked up by Sarabia Everybody in white, bar Laporte, 
inside the Croatian half of the field. The ball's at the feet of Garcia. Forward it goes from Busquets. His pass was under hit. And Croatia again win possession back down their left-hand side with Ante Rebic. Into Petkovic. Clever flick from him. Brozovic plays it down the right-hand side. Can they get a cross in here? Vlasic forced wide, but still an opportunity with players waiting in the centre. They're just outnumbered Croatia. And they're going to go all the way back to the halfway line. And you can hear what their fans make of that, Trevor Sinclair. Yeah, he had a chance to swing it in, probably with his uh, weaker foot, his right-hand side. But he didn't feel comfortable. He got to the byline. He could have just swung it into an area. Croatia had bodies in the box. He decided to recycle it, come out and start again. And the, the opportunity had been wasted. But good play initially, winning the ball back and counter-attacking the Spanish side. Not seen too much of that today. They haven't really utilised... Bruno Petkovic too much, they compare him in Croatia to Olivier Giroud, very powerful Dinamo Zagreb forward, the focal point in many ways, but barring one long ball forward from Livakovic very early in this game, he's had to feed on scraps. The Croatian front man who went almost two years without the goal for his country, up until ending that drought in 2018, did score four times in qualifying to help Croatia book their place at this championship. Here is Spain on the attack. Ferran Torres has got space right edge of the penalty area. Morata waits in the centre. Towards the far post. Morata's oh. header hits Vida and somehow stays out. I mean, that is That's a huge opportunity for Morata. That's unbelievable play. I mean, I think Croatia caused their problems themselves because they went to press in ones and twos and that's perfect for the Spanish side. They picked him off. Nice cross field ball. There's a handball in there, but I don't think it's going to be given his hands by his side uh, from the Croatian player. But the, the, the picked him off, nice ball out wide, good early cross by Torres, and it's a great, great header. He's headed it down, it's almost just great, you have to say, from the, from the goalkeeper, Lukovic, uh, Lukovic, he's got across really well and moved his feet very well to get himself into a position where the ball could hit him, and that's exactly what happened, but he got away with one there. 20 minutes gone in Copenhagen. You're listening to Talk Sport. Croatia nil, Spain nil. All the questions being asked by Spain. Oh, and that's an absolute catastrophe. And Croatia, totally against the run of play, have taken the lead. And that's a moment that Unai Simon will not want to see again. A back pass to the Spain goalkeeper. Totally missed control. Wow. And suddenly... The ball is trickling into the bottom corner. The Croatian fans inside the park and stadium go wild with delight. It was a routine back pass. Simon has got it all wrong. And he just wants the ground to open up and swallow him. Oh, Tried yeah. to control the ball with the right foot, the Spanish goalkeeper. Made a hash of it. And can't get back there to stop it trickling into the bottom right-hand corner. Croatia 1, Spain 0. That is one of the most calamitous goals of these European championships. Inexcusable, Cookie. You know, sometimes you can say if there's been a tackle and there's a big tuft of grass and it comes off that tuft of grass over his foot, you can say, you know what, you have a little bit of empathy for him. That one was on the volley. He completely took his eye off the ball. He was thinking about what he's going to do with the ball next before controlling it. And he's put his team in a really difficult position now. Well, talk about a gift for Croatia. They barely laid a glove on Spain in the opening 20 minutes. But the Spanish goalkeeper, given that number one jersey by Luis Enrique at the start of this championship, has had an absolute nightmare. Howler. I mean, I, I can't tell you how bad that is. I was in a team once, and Tony Roberts won't appreciate me bringing this up, but it was QPR, it was Loftus Road, there was bubbles all over the pitch. He went to put his foot through it, the ball bobbled over his foot. This is completely different. The ball had already had a bubble where it was in the air, he was catching it on the bullet, and it's just a, a lack of concentration. Cost him heavily. Ferran Torres bundled off the ball by Brozovic. Suddenly the Croatian towels are up. There was beer being spilt by their supporters. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you'll see a more embarrassing goal than that. For many a year, for many a major tournament. And suddenly Spain, who had dominated the game, are going to have to come from behind. 1-0 Croatia. Yeah, this and I think the last now. touch was off Simon, wasn't it? Yeah, it came off. He actually got a little touch of the, of the ball because it might have gone wide otherwise. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's just a lack of concentration. He's gone it, down officially as an own goal from Unai Simon. Yeah. I've got some notes here, having watched him 
in, in the uh, group games, Trevor. Suspect handling. Good with his feet. Brilliant with his feet, yeah. Well, he wasn't good with his no. feet there, was he? I mean, Seymour. listen, it just shows the boys are human, the pressure that's in the stadium, the expectancy, uh, the way that the Spain team has started. They've been on the front foot, they've had all the play, pretty much. And then out of the blue, you know, you've just got to keep that concentration. 100% and this is one of the biggest most difficult things for goalkeepers the concentration especially when you know your team's got 85% of possession which Spain have and he just took his eye off the ball and a little bit of complacency and yeah you do feel for him but it, it might make this game you know because the a bit more urgency about the Spanish side now they have to get back in this well, game I don't think it will change the direction of travel Spain were dictating it anyway they will continue to dominate possession I guess it's a case now of if Croatia can Dig in and hold firm. We've reached the halfway point of the first half on Talk Sport. Croatia leading by a goal to nil. Officially, they haven't had a shot on target. No. <laughs> Amazing. Here is uh, Mateo Kovacic. I've been impressed with him in this tournament, the Chelsea midfielder. Yeah, breaking player. down the left hand side. Maybe someone who's not fully appreciated at Stamford Bridge, probably, is that fair? Probably, I mean the competition for places in that midfield area for Chelsea is, is, is mega anyway. Um, Jorginho in there, obviously Kante. Oh, that could be a penalty. Down inside the area goes Rabic. That might go to VAR. I'm not sure how much of the ball the Spanish player got there. VAR will be checking this at their headquarters in Neon. Loud appeals both on and off the pitch for Croatia rough challenge again I mean, a real lapse of concentration why are you sliding in there he's on the edge of the box he's facing the wrong way he's not going to put it in the back of the net so just delay get goal side and stay on your feet and that's exactly what he didn't do here's Luka Modric what a game we've got now on Talk Sport Modric plays it forward into the area Vlasic from a tight angle into the side netting brilliant ball from Modric again Vlasic was force wide there's actually a really important touch in there, Eric Garcia, just to poke the ball away from goal as Vlasic was about to get his shot away. And by the time he did strike it goalwards, there would have to be some strike to squeeze beyond Simon at the near post. Yeah, the rattle of the Spanish. I mean, that was a really good play by Modric. Just a little simple slip ball, just kept himself on, on side. But the strength that Vlasic shown to keep Garcia at bay and just say, wait there a minute with his left arm, really strong left arm got his feet there got the ball across him the angle was going away from him but he's put his foot through it and had every chance of trying to get that on target just couldn't swing his foot around the ball too much Croatia 1 Spain nil. an own goal from Unai Simon gifting Croatia the advantage brilliant atmosphere inside the Parkin Stadium Spain come forward looking for an equaliser the pass from Laporte trying to release Sarabia down that left-hand side. He believed he was fouled by Vida. Nothing doing according to the Turkish referee, and it's cleared up field by Livakovic. When the opposition are complaining to the referee, you know you're doing something right. And that's exactly what the Spanish team are doing. Brilliant take from Vlasic. Great footwork as well from the former Everton man. It's Croatia come forward looking for a second. Kovacic from the edge of the penalty area. Right-footed shot, always rising. What a difference a goal makes, yeah. Trevor Sinclair. Suddenly there's confidence oozing through the veins of these Croatian players. That wasn't too far away from testing Simon. Yeah, good take from uh, Kovacic. He knew what he was trying to do. He was looking on his left, stepped on his left-hand side, stepped inside onto his favoured right foot, and he's hit a fierce shot there. Always rising, but certainly had the attention of the Spanish goalkeeper, Simon. Still yet to have a shot on target, Croatia, but they lead 1-0 team who've never won a knockout game at the European Championships Start. here's Ferran Torres on the right hand side hugging this near touch line chance to cross into the area again over the head of Morata met at the far post though by Sarabia underneath the ball heads it high over the crossbar for a goal kick for Croatia all I would say is that is far too easy uh, for the Sp Spanish team to get across in simple ball out to Torres he didn't even have to beat his man his man Guardiola was too far off him he's put a ball into a dangerous area fortunately for the Croats Sarabia's header was wide and high and he didn't make a great contact we've just seen that goal again I mean it's, I mean, it's inexcusable it really is cookie. It is so, he just so takes his cool. eye off it, as you say. He's almost thinking about where he's yeah. going to play the clearance. And by the time he gets his wits about him, it's rolled underneath his studs and into the bottom corner. 
You can almost embarrass celebration from the Croatian players as they gather in a huddle and Luis Enrique couldn't bring himself to watch. Well, how do you explain that to the rest of the team? It's individual errors, but when it comes from your goalkeeper, such a fundamental error as well. Yeah, it's difficult to swallow that for the Spanish team. They're rattled, though. The yes. goals do change games. Tekovic controlling it well on the edge of the Spanish area. Now Kovacic takes over. Those socks roll down to just above the ankles. And it comes to Vlasic now. Left corner of that 18-yard box. He twists and turns away from Garcia. And then plays it out to the left-hand side. Rabic is away from Coco. He's gone down holding his face. The referee is going to give a free kick. I think it's a bit theatrical there, the reaction of Coco. Certainly, Rabic is making that point as well. Just using his arm for leverage, yeah, really. Ridiculous. He's caught him on the shoulder. It's the screen. And Koke's gone down, holding his face and crying in pain. Yeah, it's the screen that Koke lets out. I mean, he doesn't hit him in the face. I think it's on his shoulder anyway. But, I mean, I'd be embarrassed to, to let out noises like that. It, you know, getting caught by a flailing arm in the chest. Ridiculous. There was a Trevor Sinclair, the former England World Cup player. Raybich is getting a very stern talking to <laughs> now from Kunate Shakir, the referee, having... Clipped Coco from behind. That was a foul. They're quite good at those fouls just to break up the play, Croatia. Yeah. As Something the Manchester City have been accused of as well. As in the we said at the top, when you're playing against a team that are, are, are technically better than you, you have to do it. You have to try and put the opposition off their game. And if it's just n little niggly knocks and you know little late tackles here and there, as long as you're not going to get booked, as long as you're not trying to do anyone, I don't see the problem with that top players can deal with that because they take it as a compliment here is Duye Chaleta Saar passing the ball back to his goalkeeper Levakovic showing Simon at the other end how it should be done clears to halfway <laughs> offside flag up against Vlasic they keep a very high line there Spain and they have a free kick no more than two yards inside their own half 1-0 Croatia lead Levakovic. you're listening to Talk Sport Levakovic there you could see his concentration on that first touch obviously seeing his uh, compatriot in the other goal miscontrol as he did the concentration was 110 percent as that ball came back to him there i think i've seen it all this european championship the goal from schick from the halfway line modric with a pitch of a goal against scotland and now an absolute clanger from unai simon to give croatia the lead and well their coach Latko dalic said his team might need a bit of luck tonight they've certainly had that already yeah. Still plenty of time for Spain to get back in the game. Torres has been dispossessed by Guardiol. It's out for a Spain throw on this near touchline. It's already looking like a key battle that Ferran Torres against the young left back for Croatia. That'll give him a confidence boost though with the goal. You know, a little spring in his step, a little bit more belief because 85% possession, you're hardly seeing the ball and all you're doing is working off the ball and it does fatigue you a lot more even though you might do the same running as the opposition when you've not got the ball it always seems harder especially in this heat here's Busquets trying to craft an opening for Spain Coco rolls it forward towards Morata and it's volleyed away by Chaleta Saar the youngest member of the Croatian team that reached the World Cup final back in 2018 good one too that <laughs> straight off his teammates chest again a little bit lucky you know a little bit rash with his clearance he had time to take that down decided to volley it clear come off his teammate landed back at his feet they had the bits of luck that you get Coca plays it infield to Busquets still trying to pull the strings Sergio Busquets so much experience at the heart of that Spanish midfield forward it goes from Gaia Morata forced wide by Chaleta Saar who slides in and concedes a corner just trying to peel on the shoulder of Chaleta Saar there Morata but strong piece of defending forcing his man away from goal and then clearing into touch those Croatian fans on their feet behind Livakovic's goal away to our right it's a corner from the left hand side which will be played in by Sarabia good header away by Rabic this time and then there's a tangle of legs inside the penalty area and the free kick will go the way of Croatia 1-0 they lead yeah just looking at that ball out swinger good header by Kovacic but just the earlier bit of uh, defending by Shalata Saar he did everything right I thought he, he, he guided Morata wide he got his body in the way and then if he stays on his feet he can just go see that out but he's so keen to make a challenge that he ends up getting a, getting a touch on the ball and giving away the corner as he grows and as he develops and as he gets better he'll realise that he can just shield that ball and just usher it out and pick up the goal kick Unai Simon the fourth goalkeeper 
in the history of the European Championship to score an own goal, all four of them, Trevor, at this tournament. Wow. That's quite some stat, isn't it? It's his horror moment, the failure to control the back pass, letting it run under his studs, diverting it into the corner, and he's given Croatia this slender lead. I mean, if you're being all too critical, the, the back pass wasn't great. You know, it was, a, it, was a, it, was, it was almost like, have that. No care, no attention. You know, I say, respect your teammates, give them the pass that you'd want to expect. That's not exactly the, the, the pass that you'd want to ex expect from your teammates or accept from your teammates. But saying that, you know, it did bounce nicely for him. It was on the volley. It was just a big mistake. It's a 45-yard back pass that you would expect your goalkeeper to be able to deal with under no pressure. Especially, especially in the modern game with the modern pitches, you know, you expect your goalkeeper to be really good with their feet. And also the pitches, the, the standard of the turf now, you know, there's hardly a problem in the pitch. So, yeah, there's no real excuse. It's just one of them lack of concentration. And yeah, I think it's made it a real good, real good contest now because it's given the Croats something to hold on to and something to keep on working for. They have uh, just lost a bit of composure as well, Spain. And conceding that goal, it was Pedri, the youngster, the star of the tournament so far, just rolled it back to his goalkeeper. Yeah, maybe overcooked it. Certainly no real blame attached Cookie, you to the 18-year-old. No, Have you seen my first touch? <laughs> <laughs> 11 minutes to go in this first half. Spain pressing for the equaliser. Vida, though as he was just trying to usher the ball out of play, was fouled by Sarabia. There will be a free kick inside the Croatian six-yard box. Yeah, Vida's done really well there, making sure that back four hold the line, letting the winger run into an offside position. And it's an easy one. You win possession back straight away. Get that line right, make sure you've got a really solid, disciplined back four, and you hold it together, and you win the ball back very easily, and they did that really well there. What's been said about Spain, maybe not being the, the Spain that we've bec become accustomed to watching over the last few tournaments, but they've only lost one of their last 27 internationals, 16 wins, 10 draws. They are unbeaten in 11 coming into this one. They've certainly got form, haven't they? It is a bit of a rebuild job from Luis Enrique. I think what the telltale sign for me is when you when you when you manage a team, especially a team of, of elite standard like this, this is. a great piece of skill by Morata inside the centre circle. Releases Sarabia down the left-hand side, but well defended by Juranovic. Just ushers it back to the goalkeeper. Yeah, good defending. I've seen Luis Enrique really frustrated from the side, back in orders. That tells you that he's not happy, completely happy with the pattern, in and out of possession, and he's not quite happy with what he's got at the moment. So it is a bit of a transition for the Spanish side, but still with the quality they've got and the experience they've got, you would expect them to be putting in better performances, and especially with the, you know, the, the possession they have, being a bit more clinical in that final third. Luka Modric in the right-back position for Croatia, still manages to oh. scoop it forward, left-footed and find a teammate. It's controlled expertly by Petkovic can't keep it though Croatia and Spain have it back on the halfway line with the fullback Gaillard one nil Croatia lead we've got nine minutes the first half still to play here on talk sport then we get France against Switzerland coming up once we're finished and then England Germany this time tomorrow live from Wembley Spain attack down their right with Ferran Torres, it's been their bright spark so far, Torres crosses, blocked behind by Guardiol, Spain have their fourth corner, they're dominating all of the statistics, possession, shots, corners, are the one that really matters. Yeah, goals conceded because they haven't really conceded many shots either, um, I mean, in a nutshell, it's, it's, it's been a story of the Euros, hasn't it, you know, dominating possession, carving out good opportunities and being a bit toothless in front of goal. Here's Sarabia with a corner. Koke has come across as well, and Koke plays it in towards the near post. Headed only as far as the edge of the penalty area, and a low shot. It's Sarabia. Bounces harmlessly wide. Last touch may well have been off Cesar Athelicueta. I think the initial shot was heading for the corner flag, and Athelicueta just tried to adjust his body and guide it into the corner. It was wayward from Gaillard. Yeah. Athelicueta couldn't 
divert it on target. Yeah, good little layoff, about 25 yards out. He gets it all wrong, just pulls his shot. But fair play to Cesar Aspilicueta, staying alert, trying to get a little touch on the ball as it goes through to deflect it on target. Just couldn't adjust his feet quickly enough and it goes harmlessly wide. He's crying out for the ball down this right-hand side of Aspilicueta and he gets it just inside the and half of the field, forward by Sarabia, wanted back from Koke, Sarabia into the centre, this could be another opportunity for Spain inside the penalty, the goalkeeper's come a long way off his line, they were appealing for handball, I think if there was a handball it was off Pedri, still they come again Spain, that's a good save from the goalkeeper, and the rebound is hammered in by Sarabia, Spain are back on level terms, Livakovic who made a fantastic save initially, couldn't quite dust himself down to keep out the follow-up from Pablo Sarabia. Well, he was on the score sheet against Slovakia, and he's on the score sheet again. Salutes the Spanish crowd and the cameraman down by the corner flag. It's a brilliant stop initially after the handball shouts had relented. Gaia with a fizzer and then hammered in by Sarabia from eight yards out. Croatia won, Spain won. Yeah, I was impressed with the way they kept the ball alive there. You know, it looked like the chance had gone. He stayed nice and composed, which you'd expect from this Spanish side. It's a fantastic save by Livakovic, but the finish, composed, aggressive, committed. It's actually come off the goalkeeper, said he's unfortunate because he's, he's putting himself out there to, to try and keep it out, but it's a good finish. And on the, the strength of the way the game's gone, you would have to say that Spain deserved that equaliser. Game on in Copenhagen. Pablo Sarabia, who did so much in that game against Slovakia to book Spain's place in the knockout stages, has got them back on level terms with seven minutes the first half remaining. As Trevor Sinclair has articulated there, it is no more than they deserve. Bar that one moment of madness from the goalkeeper, they've been the dominant force. Here's Petkovic, though. Suddenly it's wide open, Pekovic, five yards outside the penalty area. Tries to smuggle it forward to Rabic, who I think was offside. Couldn't control it, but the flag does belatedly go up, and it will be a free kick for Spain inside their own penalty area. 1-1. One, one. Yeah, just when you need your touch to be right. I weren't sure whether it was offside. He wasn't sure whether he was offside. He was right on the, the shoulder of the last man, but his first touch just let him down and put it out of play for a goal kick. Actually, the, the referee's brought it back. It is, a, it is an offside decision. But when you get chances like that, you've got to look after the ball. You've got to make sure that that first touch is spot on. So hopefully your next touch can be either shooting across goal or putting one of your teammates in. Are we going to get another goal before half-time here on Talk Sport? The goal scorer Sarabia running at Guardiola. Cutting on his left foot. He's going to try to switch the play here. Intelligently sweeps it out that far touch line. Torres, deep cross towards the far post, headed away by Guardiola, right in front of his own goalkeeper, and then Petkovic has conceded a clumsy foul on Garcia, and it's a free kick for Spain, 15 yards inside Croatian territory, they've taken it short, Koke, out the right-hand side again, I think Sarabia and Ferran Torres just switched wings momentarily, here's Sarabia, finds Apel Equator on the overlap, low cross into the area, guided away by Brozovic out for a throw yeah both full backs have overlapped really well Jose Gaillard on the left hand side and so is uh, Cesar Aspilicueta when they get their chance and it's almost like as you can see the, the move building that's their trigger to say go on then off you go on your bike and they've done that really well not always getting it but they've always made themselves an option which sometimes it can take defenders away and open up different spaces they've done that really well the Spanish how will Lee Balloon I see be feeling right now oh my days <laughs> I think uh, Sarabia will be getting a big cuddle at half-time in the changing room. Good ball from Busquets out this right-hand side. Sarabia looks like he's in the mood now. Yeah. Crosses low, blocked by Guardiola. It will trickle behind for another Spanish corner. This is what happens to us wingers. We get a goal, whether it's a deflected goal, whether it comes up our shin, but that just gives you that confidence then to get your foot on the ball and start attacking that full-back. And Sarabia, he's probably been the pick of the bunch. He's looked lively from the start and he's got his rewards. He earned rave reviews in the Spanish media, Sarabia, after that game against Slovakia last time out. Corner kick from the right-hand side. Koke stands over the ball and drills it in right-footed. It's headed behind by Petkovic doing his defensive duty. It will be another corner. And the first half in Copenhagen ending like it started with Spain very much in the ascendancy. 1-1 the score. You're listening to Talk Sport. Alex Crook and Trevor Sinclair, your commentary team. 
France against Switzerland still to come. That's an 8 o'clock kickoff after we're finished in this one. Coco with a corner. They've dealt with the set pieces quite well, Croatia, so far. It's still in Spanish possession, though, out the left-hand side. And Torres, who might cross deep towards the far post. Hoisted away by Petkovic. Coco with a shot from 20 yards out. Always wide. Yeah, speculative. I'd like to see in Spain, I mean, they've had so many corners and, and set pieces. I'd like to see him just change it up a little bit and play a few short corners and short free kicks because you look at the way that Zlato Dalic's got this Croatian side set up and they look almost impenetrable, especially with the size difference. They've got a lot of physical players in their side and just putting the ball into their box is like food and drink for them players. So I'd like to see him try and mix that up, play a few short ones and see if they can catch the Croatians out. Here's Rebic, midway inside the Spain half. Vlasic plays it back towards the centre circle of Modric. They just haven't been able to get their captain, Croatia, on the ball in a dangerous position. I think we're near enough in this first half. Kovacic has been tripped by Busquets, takes the free kick quickly. Time running out at the end of the opening 45. Two minutes to play in the first half as Vlasic drops deep and plays it down the right-hand side. Chance for Juranovic to cross in towards the near post and... I'm sure Rabic really believed he could get on the end of it and bounces harmlessly in the end into the arms of Simon. He showed his crossing ability, Juranovic making the first goal against Scotland a week ago and that was a teasing delivery again. Yeah, brilliant cross by Juranovic, uh, put it right into the area. I mean, the keeper must be thanking his lucky stars because that's come through to him and fell in his feet, uh, into his hands. But if the forward could have just got across there, even thrown himself at it, launched, him, launched his head at it, he might have just got something on the ball and you never know what can happen from there. But yeah, brilliant cross from Juranovic and uh, I think they need to try and get him into areas if he's got that kind of quality from crossing areas. The guy are linking out with Morata. Morata left corner of the penalty area, he crosses into the box and it's hooked up in the air but not really away by Chaleta Saar Radio heads it clear and it should be picked up by Petkovic facing his own goal and just about managed to smuggle it back to Guardiol it's all a struggle isn't it Puppy, when they win the ball back I think the counter pressure on Spain they're all over it and unfortunately at the moment the Croatians touch and awareness and, and, and the angles for each other he's not been quick enough and, and Spain just keep on winning the ball back too quickly if you take away the comical own goal it's been a pretty perfect first half for Luis Enrique in Spain yeah, I mean, the, the team talk afterwards is stay concentrated, keep doing what you're doing, and can we punish them a bit more clinically in the final third? Trying to squeeze it through there for Morata was Torres, but run back by Croatia. Modric with a Class. calm header clear, guides it into Kovacic, who covers up the ground into the Spanish half, and he's released Rebic, and the goalkeeper Simon quickly off his line to clear that right footed. Dangerous attack, and Simon this time comes to Spain's rescue yeah it's an absolutely outstanding run out to win looks like he's come pulling off and then all of a sudden he changes his direction to run centrally he's picked out it's in his path he's got the pace but fortunately Simon he's on his toes he's razor sharp there comes out and clears up the dangerous and follows it up the pitch and here's Juranovic over the halfway line for Croatia Spain have to stay alert here when Croatia do come forward Gaia does well to clear it towards the halfway line then there was a foul by Vida and it's a free kick for Spain, 10 yards inside their own half, Vida just catching Ferran Torres from behind. We're into one added minute at the end of the 45 here on Talk Sport. 1-1 the score between Croatia, World Cup finalists only three years ago, and Spain three times European champions. You take England, Germany and Belgium, Portugal out the equation, this is just about the tie of the last 16 in terms of pedigree. Here's Morata turning on the edge of the penalty area and then putting his laces through it and firing his right fully drive high over the crossbar. He's a frustrating player yeah, at times. I don't mind that quickly though because he had a couple of runs off the ball. He knew that he couldn't really pick him out so he took responsibility, got it onto his favourite foot and it's just the, the end product. If you can just try and get that on target and work the keeper, you can't say he's any quick longer with that. He can't do that and it's a bit of a wasted opportunity. And that way with effort from Morata, the last action of the first half in Copenhagen, Spain have dominated almost from the first second but they conceded in comical fashion against the run of player 45 yard back pass from the teenager Pedri miscontrolled by Udai Simon and he could only watch in agony as the ball trickled into the bottom corner that own goal cancelled out seven minutes before half time Pablo Sarabia following up after Gaia's shot had been well saved by Livakovic nothing to separate these two in terms of the scoreline anyway, Adrian, but if this was a boxing match, 
It may well have been stopped a few times. Croatia won, Spain won. Thank you, Adrian. Well, the last time these two met was a Nations League game back in November 2018. It ended in a 3-2 defeat for Spain. They haven't conceded more than one goal in any of the 27 matches they've played since that loss. If they can maintain that, and Luis Enrique will be confident in the second half that they will create enough chances to put this Croatian team to the sword. Unai Simon gifting the World Cup runners-up the lead against the run of play with that 20th minute own goal finally to control a big routine back pass from Pedri Spain back on level terms Pablo Sarabia seven minutes before half time with the equaliser there is a change here Trevor for Croatia and it's a change up front Bruno Petkovic who was a passenger really in that first half has been replaced by the former Leicester striker Andre Kramaric who himself hasn't pulled up any trees at this tournament it is a problem isn't it when you look at the Croatia teams of the past, you mentioned Davos Suka out on the pitch before the game. Mario Mandzukic retired after that World Cup final. They haven't really had a focal point since. We are back off and underway. Croatia all in black, shooting from left to right against the Spanish side, all in white, attacking the goal away to our left. What do you make of that train change, Trevor Sinclair? Yeah, it's not a surprise. Um, I think he, he, you know, Petrovic has had the opportunity. He's played 45 minutes. He's given everything, but the quality's not been there. And one of the things that I would have been disappointed with if I was the coach of this Croatian team is when the ball does come up to you, you've got to be ready for that. And at, at, at times he was on his heels. Eric Garcia, Laporte was nipping him in front of him, either getting the ball or winning fouls because he was a little bit sleepy to them situation you've got to play in the future you've got to be ready for the out ball and make sure you either make it stick and bring one of your teammates into play or win the foul and he did neither so no surprise there good good call good substitution for me yeah decisive action from Plako Dalic as Juranovic attacks down the right hand side you can hear the <laughs> cheers from the Croatian fans behind the goal as Heinrich Laporte played the back pass back to Simon this time he does deal with it comfortably enough and Afilicueta press it forward Looking for the run of Sarabia. The ball sows over his head and he's collected by Dominic Livakovic, the Croatian goalkeeper. 1-1 one, one on Talk Sport. Don't forget, still to come this evening, France. Many people's favourites for this competition take on Switzerland. And they will meet in the quarter-finals, whoever comes out on top in this tie. In the balance as Morata hurdles the challenge of Guardiola. He was side down, Morata, free kick. Right in the centre of the Croatia half. Again, that ball into uh, Brazovic. You know, his first touch is he's not good enough. He's lost possession. And straight away, the counter-attack from Spain. And Morata does his job. He gets the ball. He uses his body to shield the ball. Wins the foul. And straight away, Spain are on the front foot. They've got a, a free kick, what, 18, 20 yards outside the 18-yard box. Well, if Ronaldo was out there, then he would probably fancy the shot based on what we saw last night. But I think... Uh, Koke will be intelligent enough just to dink this into the penalty area. Very congested on the edge of that Croatian 18-yard box. 1-1 one, one the score. Here's Koke, right-footed into the area, headed away by Vida. Out to the right-hand side. Ball under control, though, by Sarabia. He's forced wide by Luka Modric. Still Spain keep possession, keeping it well as well. Here's Pedri, the 18-year-old. Youngest player since Lionel Messi to play 50 games for Barcelona, Pedri didn't even have a professional contract this time a year ago. It's been quite some rise for him. Spain dictating possession as they did in the first half. Yeah, there's a lack of quality in possession from the Croatians and Spain are almost immediately winning the ball back whenever they do lose it. OK, onside, timed his run over on the far touchline, linking up neatly with Sarabia. Chance maybe to get a cross in, he's seen that route blocked by Kovacic, so goes back to Sarabia. Pedri with room to turn on the edge of the penalty area. Oh, he's wriggled away from the attentions of the big defender. Chaleta Saar crossed towards the near post, guided across the six-yard line by Morata, but away from goal. And here come Croatia on the counter-attack. With the Quicksilver Vlasic, but dispossessed. It was a good challenge coming in from Jose Gallar. A surprise inclusion in this Spanish team at left back ahead of Jordi Alba, but he did well there just as Vlasic was getting up ahead of Steve. Yeah, nice composed, nice and composed challenge. Difficult situation against someone who's really quick. Just bide your time, delay, wait until he has his bad touch, and then 
win possession back and it was great defending by the Spanish. Croatia's last six defeats have been by a single goal. They aren't a team who give too many opportunities away. They are content to soak up pressure and try and hit on the counter. That's been the game plan right from the early minutes in this one and it won't change. A little bit of rivalry there. Uh, forget about the nations. Just looking at Modric and Busquets there in the middle of the pitch. No love lost, I'm sure, between them two. Yeah, Real Madrid against Barcelona, of course. Not a single Real Madrid player in the Spanish squad. Man, he's made of that before the tournament when Incredible. Luis Enrique made his picks. Spain still dictating the pace of the game. It's uh, hoisted forward by Pedri, but that's uh, asked too much of Koke. And Livakovic plays it out to Chaleta Sar on the edge of the penalty area. 1-1 one, one the score here on Talk Sport. We play five minutes in the second half. Alex Brook and Trevor Sinclair, your commentary team. England against Germany, 5 o'clock tomorrow, live from Wembley. And you're confident, Trevor, that will be an England win. I am. You know, looking at the, the quality of the players, um, looking at what we've got compared to what they've got, and I feel we've got a better squad, and if, if managed correctly, and the right players start, and the right players have the, the, the impact that I feel they can have, I think we've got enough to beat the Germans. And we'll bring you the all-important team news first and fastest here on Talk Sport. Jim Crowfoot, your commentator in charge of that, before kick-off as rivalries are renewed. Cheers, you can hear the Croatian fans of Spain monopolising the ball once again without really putting that Croatian back line under any serious pressure that is a foul conceded by Joško Guardiol he'll be on his way to Leipzig in Germany at the end of this tournament the teenage left back he's a big lad for a left back he you? is yeah big boy looks strong athletic just got caught wrong side there um, just went fishing looking to see if he could get his foot around the front of the defender and uh, Sarabia rolled in really well, good spatial awareness, good understanding where the ball was and where the defender was. And just rolled in and got the wrong side and got the shirt pulled back. And here's the port over the halfway line for Spain, out for the left-hand side. And Jose Gallar, infield for Busquets, who skips away from the challenge of Mateo Kovacic. Morata with his back to goal, lays it back into the path of Busquets. And here down the left-hand side is Ferran Torres towards the far post. Apel Equator just trying to stab it down inside the penalty area, straight into the arms of... Livakovic has got to head it Aspilicueta his touch is not that good if he just cushion heads out across the goal he's certainly going to get a contact by one of his teammates I thought he took the wrong option there using his foot certainly there for the header and you've got a lot more accuracy and control with your head just cushion that into an area here's Juranovic in space down the Croatian right hand side he's on the edge of the penalty area forward towards Kramaric over hit it and playing by Unai Simon in front of those Vociferous Croatia fans behind the goal, just to remind you of the uh, two lineups in this second half for Croatia, Livakovic between the posts, Juranovic, Chaleta Sar, Bida and Guardiola in defence, Brozovic and Kovacic deepest in midfield with Vlasic, Modric and Rabic supporting Kramaric now in attack, Spain unchanged from the first half, Simon in goal, Apel Equator, Garcia, Laporte and Gaillard, then come Koke, Busquets and Pedri with Sarabia, Morata and Torres in a three-pronged attack. 1-1 one, one the score. And it's Spain who have the ball with Heimerich the ball mm. halfway inside his own half. I don't think he wants to play that back. It's almost an option's gone. It does go back to Unai. I mean, Simon will be Simon. absolutely switched on now every time. Yeah. The ball is played back to him on the edge of the penalty area. Well, his starting position's been really good again now. He's just thwarted a through ball for the Croatians, got there first and was able to clear up. Morata's having a bit of a complaint there, again. Is it Vida? I think it's uh, Kramaric, actually. Coming through the back. Of, yeah, they're nasty ones then. Straight, uh, his knee straight into the hamstring of the forward as he controls the ball. Cheap one, and they can they can really be reducers then. They can put you out of action, so I understand why Morata's having a complaint there. Kudet Shakir, the referee, hasn't seen the need to go to his notepad yet. There are a number of players, one booking away from suspension for both teams. Will he be aware of that? He shouldn't come into it, though, Cookie. You, the health and well-being of the players should be paramount. So, well, I think Brozovic should certainly have been booked in the first half, just under the tossing up procedure. He is one of those players who, if he does pick up a second yellow card, will be suspended. That was a late challenge by Chaleta Sar on Morata. The referee tried to play an advantage. 
and does now bring it back for a free kick. I think he's also indicating maybe that the ball was flat, which is something we've seen a few times this tournament. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a strange one, that, because usually prior to, to kick off in the preparation, the officials will make sure they get their electric pumps out, make sure the balls are pumped up to the sufficient levels. Do you know what? I think it was this stadium as well, Denmark against Finland in the first game of that group. They changed the ball about three times. Mm, strange one. There is Enrique in his white shirt unbuttoned around the collar. He's issuing his instructions. Is that Kodalic? He doesn't eat on match days. Mm. To Pep. his left looks same as Pep. enough. Same as Pep Guardiola. And sometimes you see him in his interviews and his mouth's dry and you think, why would you do that to yourself? By all accounts, it makes him more alert. Maybe I'll try that one. Here's Torres. <laughs> Leave it. Yeah. the penalty area. Towards the far post. Apple Equator again tries to drill it down inside the 18-yard box. It's hooked away by Kovacic. Out for a throw. Spain asking the questions early in the second half. 1-1 one, one the score there, fans. Over on the far side. Getting plenty of vocal support, despite the fact they're largely outnumbered by their Croatian counterparts. Torres having a lot of joy down this left-hand side. Good movement. I mean, he just lost, lost the ball there, commentator's curse, but in general, he's getting crosses in for fun and causing a big problem for this Croatian side. Do you know he learned to dribble, Ferran Torres, up against his pet dog in the back garden? <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a Jack Russell. He is fleet-footed, and he has caused plenty of problems for Croatia. Good athlete. You look at the, the shape of him. You look, you know, he's quick. He's got good agility. He's got good feet on both sides. And he's having a, a decent amount of success since he moved to Manchester City. And that was another big call from Luis Enrique. Ferran Torres starting ahead of Gerard Moreno. It's a change that so far has worked to good effect. He's having quite the influence on proceedings. And here comes Spain again with the youngster Pedri out to the left-hand side. Torres, two yards from the byline, crosses towards the far post. And he's been headed in by Cesar Apeliqueta. Spain come from behind to lead in Copenhagen and the Chelsea defender gets his head on the end of a pinpoint cross from Ferran Torres it's a goal made in the Premier League that might just take Spain into the quarterfinals of the European Championship Croatia 1, Spain 2 can't tell you how good that goal is I was criticising Aspen Quetta earlier he should have uh, cushion headed the ball this time he gets the ball off Simon and I have to say Unai Sivan plays a really good ball to him, he steps in, he keeps on going, he looks for a little pass, he can't make it, he steps in again, through the midfield, plays a good ball into Pedri, Pedri plays it out wide to Torres, there's no pressure on Torres, he puts a delicious cross into the six-yard box, and who is it? Aspilicueta, following his run, getting into where, he's, where he could get contact on the ball, gets the first contact and it's a great header, no chance for the keeper, one two. A bullet header from Aspilicueta. And Spain, within 12 minutes of the second half, have the lead that their domination has deserved. And Croatia are going to need to do what Spain did in the first half and come from behind. It's a great goal. It's a really good goal. I mean, it's well worked, but the pressure on Aspilicueta, too passive, let him run right through the heart of the defence, right at that heart of the defence, through the midfield, Went into Pedri, he didn't do too much on the ball, nice little touch, get it out wide to Torres, who put a peach of a ball in, and it's a fantastic header by Cesar Aspilicueta. He's not had a bad summer, has he? Got the Champions League <laughs> in the trophy cabinet, and now, in his 27th cap, has scored his first ever international goal. What a time to come up brilliant. with the goods, Trevor. Yeah, brilliant, really pleased for him. Croatia won Spain too here yeah. on TalkSport. Very popular boy, I believe, at Chelsea, at Cobham. You know, really respected highly, both the coaching, upstairs in the director's area. He's a terrific pro, isn't he? He's played yeah. 450 games for Chelsea. You think how many managers he survived as well. <laughs> He's had more, almost as many managers. <laughs> more, more than most, I would suggest, being at Chelsea. His header has Spain in front, and they are tiptoeing now towards a place in the last eight. They've only lost one game in the knockout stages of the European Championship since 2000. That was a 2-0 defeat to Italy at this stage back in 2016. 
And it is to be Spain against France. France in action against Switzerland live here on Talk Sport. That's an 8 o'clock kickoff tonight. What a quarter final that could be. Great contrast of styles. Great contrast of playing styles, you know. A possession team against a team that are absolutely ruthless in front of goal. And they've got the athletes and they've got the intensity to affect any opposition. Take away the own goal. I think this has been impressive from Spain. Yeah, been a good performance. We have to say though, you know, with with, with the uh, with the uh, the missing uh, Perisic, they don't really have any teeth going forward. Croatia, and you would say it, it is against the weakened side, just for that one reason. Yeah, he was excellent in uh, both the games. I watched at Hampden Park involving Croatia scored a wonderful goal against the Czech Republic, backed it up against Scotland. Perisic, it would have been a huge setback. The news of his positive COVID test came through. Yeah, I just don't understand how the lads are still getting COVID. You know, in the bubbles, staying away from people. There's just no rhyme or reason, but you do feel sorry for the players. You know, they've built up for this. Been looking forward to this for a long time. Obviously, with the delay last summer. And then getting yourself match fit, making sure you're at the top, real peak of your performance coming into this tournament. And then starting really well, as he has. Players sitting and then being told, sorry, mate, you've got to go on. And actually without Perisic to aim at, Modric just struggled to get too much of a stranglehold in this game as well. He's just stood with his arm in the air on the edge of the centre circle. There has been speculation that if Croatia do go out tonight, it could well be his last international game. Surely he'll stay on for the World Cup next year, won't he? Yeah, what, 17 months away? Um, not, this, not this winter, next winter. I'd like to think so because he's shown us enough already that he's still got the ability and he's got the passion. And he's got the legs, you know, to carry himself at this kind of stage. Well, he's, he's never been a player who relies on pace. He plays the game in his head. And they need a big performance Beautiful. from him here, Croatia, as we watch a replay of the header from Afbel Equator. Five yards out, point-blank range, straight through the despairing dive of Livakovic, a punch of celebration from Luis Enrique. Yeah. And these Spanish supporters who've been outnumbered by their Croatian counterparts suddenly behind Livakovic's goal and away on the far side over in that corner are the ones making all the noise. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, you look at Aspilicueta being a defender, especially being a fullback, and he understands when a, a winger comes in or a forward comes in, he'd rather him stay on the outside, stay back a little bit where he can see the ball and see the, see the player. He realises that, so he made sure he put himself in a position where he was going to give the defender a problem. He steps across and he gets his rewards because the cross is slightly under hit and he's able to get in front of the defender and get his rewards. Croatia have only lost three of their last 14 European Championship games. They are less than half an hour away from going out, but they're coming forward here with Guardiola in an advanced position collected by Modric, 10 yards inside Spanish territory, sprays it out this right touch line and... Juranovic brings it neatly under control. Have to get Modric on the ball more. He's given it away there, though. Yeah, it's pe to Pedri. It, it, it's the weight of passes. It, it didn't need that kind of weight of pass. You know, he's five yards away. There's many bodies and defenders around him. He just wants a nice soft one so he can play it first time and get out of that little press. And he plays at him too hard where he has to take a touch. And what, when, once he's taken his touch, that takes time because the defender's time to close in, dispossess him. And, yeah, it must be difficult for Modric, you know, and then you get elite player playing with players that sometimes not being rude or disrespectful are not on his level. There are 13 survivors in the Croatian squad from that team that reached the World Cup semi-final, but they have lost some key personnel since then. And Zlatko Dalic still has the faith, not just of his players, but of the Croatian FA as well, although there have been one or two dissenting voices from the fans. The ball is stroked out this right hand side of the ball. Down neatly again by Juranovic. Over the top of the Spanish back line. Look at Kramaric, who I think was offside. The goalkeeper, Simon, comes and tucks the ball on the edge of the 18 yard box anyway. I've been impressed with the Spanish, not just in possession, but counter pressing. And if that counter press gets beaten, the work rate to get back into positions where you're getting goal side and you can affect the ball, they've done that so well today. Morata coming deep into the centre circle. 
Barring that header blocked by Vida in the first half, hasn't had too many opportunities. Morata no, but you just to seen add there. to the goal that he scored against Poland. You just seen there, you know, it's an out ball. The ball goes into his feet. He retained possession because his first touch is good. He's either winning a foul or keeping possession and finding the teammate. People don't see that. That is the job of a number nine. He can't always score, but if you're not scoring, he could be a good link up player, and he's done that superbly well today. Here's Sarabi with a cross towards Morata. Vida there. Just ahead of the Spain striker, and it will be cleared by Guardiol. A lovely pirouette there from Vlasic, looking to release Kramaric, but maybe he's got a bit carried away by the silky skills, and in the end plays it too long, and it's collected by Simon midway inside the Spain half. 2-1 Spain lead, 65 minutes gone on Talk Sport. Yeah, I'm just I'm struggling to find a way of seeing how this uh, this game's going to change because they're so composed in possession again. You know, they're making the pitch nice and big. They've got a focal point in Morata. He's always available, as we see there, just fronting up, getting into that pocket. And you can just see him testiculating there to his teammate. Play it into my feet. You know, it's, we've got few players in there now. Play it into me and we're through that press. But he keeps on making them angles. And, yeah, they've got a great passage of play where the players seem very familiar. Again, Morata there, getting the ball to feet, finding Pedri. Here down the left-hand side is Ferran Torres, his cross headed in by Azpel Equator to give Spain this 2-1 lead early in the second half and after Unai Simon has scored an own goal to give Croatia their opening goal on 20 minutes, counselled out by Sarabia, a pathetic finish, seven minutes before the end of the first half at the tail of the tape so far. On the left-hand side is Ravic, crosses into the penalty area but smash clear by Garcia so comfortable aren't they at the back Spain at the moment Rogers just beginning to pick some passes though and here's Brozovic pokes it to the left hand side that's a poor effort by Ravic lack power comfortable save down low to his right by Simon yeah just doesn't catch it it's on his right foot it's quite a slow pass out to him on the left hand side he's obviously favours his right foot and he tries to take it first time with his right foot and just gets it all wrong with it a bit of a daisy cutter nice and easy for the goalkeeper Simon to collect Guy R has played that all the way across the 18 yard box Apple Equator isn't the biggest did well to leap and with the head keeping in play on the far touch line then he's been caught off the ball by Rabic again the referee is uh, not going to show a yellow card and Croatia are going to make their second change and it's the player that the Croatian supporters were clamouring for to start this game Mislav Orsic replaces Ante Rebic scored a famous hat-trick Orsic in that Europa League win against Tottenham for Dinamo Zagreb live on Talk Sport 2 brought on to pep up the toothless attack so far yeah. here is Kovacic into Modric well forward on the edge of the area Modric and Orsic involved straight away cuts it back for Guardiol and that's a good save at the near post by Simon as Guardiol just tried to guide it from an acute angle into the bottom corner. That will do Unai Simon's confidence some good. Yeah, it's a good save. Uh, he doesn't quite catch it. He goes under the defender who's diving in. I think it might be Garcia. Goes under his feet, so he's a little bit wrong. Maybe he can't see it properly, but he gets down to his right at the near post and smothers the ball. It's a good save by Simon. Encouragement for Croatia, though, in front of their own fans. And Rata has had his pocket picked by Kovacic. 2-1 is still a dangerous scoreline as far as Spain are concerned. Still in the game. Here's Luka Modric now. Trying to release Juranovic down the right-hand side. Intercepted by Torres. And then Vlasic, despite his protestations, can't keep the ball in play. And Spain have a throw halfway inside their own half. 2-1 they lead. 68 minutes played in Copenhagen. Yeah, I'm just watching the replay of uh, the save there by Simon. And it's a very good save. Sometimes when that ball goes through the defender's legs, especially when he's diving in like that, it can it can uh, be unsighted for the goalkeeper. But he keeps his eye on the ball and shows good reflexes to get down to his near post and his right right inside and and gathers it well. Well, they haven't put the game to bed yet, Spain. Despite all the possession, all the shots on goal, all the set pieces. They are only 2-1 in front, I think Kramaric has beaten the offside trap, has he? Into the penalty area, saved by the legs of Simon. The flag does go up belatedly, and it will be a free kick for Spain. Just for a moment, I thought Kramaric had timed his run, but he had straight beyond the final defender. Yeah, good goalkeeping again. 
It's a good take, he gets onto his right hand side coming in from the left. It's a decent effort but he's too close to the goalkeeper and just looking at the replay there, he's yards, yards offside. Simon doesn't know that, he stands tall, gets his angles all right and saves with his feet. Ferran Torres in a pretty heated exchange there with Luis Enrico, the Spain coach. What's that all about, Trevor Sinclair? Frustration. You know, they're, they're having a lot of possession, still Spain, and the winning, so it's, it's frustrating for the opposition, and sometimes that can spill over to the technical area. There's Busquets turning inside his own half, away from Brozovic. Coco with a slide rule pass forward. And here comes the Spring Hill Pedri towards the penalty area. Away to our left-hand side here on TalkSport. He goes back towards halfway and Busquets. Spain content just to keep possession, try and grind down this Croatia team, run down the clock. And as Croatia inevitably have to commit all bodies forward, maybe hit on the counter-attack yeah. and wrap up the game. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Pedri, you know, for such a young player. His understanding of the Spanish way to keep possession... You know, not just to go forward and think it's about you scoring a worldie or dribbling past players, which I'm sure he's got the ability to do. He's just kept possession really well, jumps into pockets really good. Great spatial awareness, he knows what's around him. That's the voice of the former England winger Trevor Sinclair here on Talk Sport. Still to come this evening, France take on Switzerland. Eight o'clock kickoff in that one. Jim Proudfoot and Stuart Pearce, your coverage team. And is Brozovic finally going to get a yellow card here? It's another foul, this time... Just swiping the right leg of Koke. <laughs> Still can't believe he's not been booked. Shakir, the referee. Four yeah, Shakir, the referee is very, very easier on the players. He's letting them get away with a lot. I don't think there's been any menace in any real challenges, so it makes it easy for the referee. If there was a little bit of intent with any of these challenges, I think it would have been quite easy for him to get the yellow card out. Despite the making changes, Danny Olmo is coming on for their first goal scorer. Pablo Sarabia. And the Spanish media quiet. were predicting that Olmo might have started tonight. It's part of that front three. And Pau Torres, the Villarreal defender, heavily linked with a move to Manchester United in recent weeks, is also coming on to replace Eric Garcia at the heart of that Spanish defence. What do you make of those changes, Trevor? The Spain line up a free kick. Interesting, interesting, especially changing a defender. I think they've looked really solid at the back. Eric Garcia has done a good job with Laporte, good partnership. And here's Koke with the free kick towards the far post. Heading down inside the penalty on the ratter from a yard out. Has put the ball into the back of the net, but he was offside. VAR. Yeah, I wonder if the initial effort was maybe goal bound anyway. It's a really good leap initially from the port to head it across the six-yard box. I don't think it was going in. I think Morata was offside as he just finished off Torres's swivelling shot. It's a bit disappointing from a player with that experience of Morata. You know, he's he's gone on the second phase. He's in an offside position and he's not tried to get out as the ball's knocked across. He stayed in the offside position. The ball's come to him. It's a good knee and finish. Two touch, nice and sharp but he, he didn't work hard enough to earn the right to be in an onside position, hence why the goal's been chalked off. It's a good burst forward by Brozovic. I'm not sure what Croatia are appealing for. It's a free kick for Spain for a foul inside the penalty area. Brozovic, I think he's asking for a handball. <laughs> and, well, actually, he's given away four fouls. <laughs> At least. But it's descent. <laughs> That, Bro that Brozovic has finally been booked for, and if they do get through Croatia, he will miss the next game. I there was a foul on yeah. Koke, who did grab the ball, but I think he had been upended by Orsic. <laughs> but yeah, the foul had already been given, but like you can see Koke there, he's almost on top of the ball, and Aspilicueta has kicked the ball against his arm, which he's being supported on, which is on the ground. And uh, out of all the challenges that Brozovic has made, this is uh, appealing to the referee. Did you catch a glimpse of the tattoo that Brozovic has got on his left-hand side of his neck? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's a, a bomb. bomb. <laughs> I think that might tell you a bit about his personality. I think so as well. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, another change for Croatia. Looks like maybe a change in system here because Josip Brekalo is coming on to replace Juranovic, the right-back. So maybe a 
tactical tweak there from Zatko Dalic. Croatia trailing by two goals to one. They might be going to a back three here. Yeah. With uh, Brekolo and Guardiol as wing backs. Desperate measures now. Yeah. 17 minutes from going out of the European Championship, the World Cup runners up of three years ago. Just need to, cheat, need to try and get hold of the ball and keep it in. It's easier said than done. Brett Orshic has gone out that left-hand side as a wing back and he's making his way into the penalty area now. Brekolo has made a good run to the far post. It's volley clear by Pau Torres. That's a great take from Morata. This is what I'm talking about. That is brilliant. Tracks the play. ball down from the air and keeps Spain in possession. He brings so much more to the Spanish side. You know, we've said it before and I think the manager Luis Enrique has come out and said this. It's not just all about his goals. As a focal point, when you're playing in this system where you've got one player up top on his own, he has to be that link between the out ball and then bringing his teammates into the game. I, I, I'm being honest now, Morata has done a superb job at that today. He's got a lot of stick, is not he, back home as Adrian Darren was alluding to before kick-off. Spain have got a problem here, by the way. Jose Gaiar is down his haunches. Luis Enrique imploring the referee to stop well, play. And that's a, a back pass to Livakovic that the Croatian goalkeeper didn't exactly deal with comfortably. He does clear it in the end. At the well. same end, where Simon scored the own goal in the first half for Spain. I thought he did well. Oh. No, a foul by Brekolo. Shoving the back on Pedri. Pedri brilliant. Just not panicking there, getting his body between the ball and the defender. You can see he's coming, he's got his peripheral vision, he knows it's coming, and he just lets him push into the back of him. Thank you very much. Earned a free kick. Really intelligent play by the young 18-year-old. He's been compared to Iniesta. Wow. Pedri. Oh my God. That no. is some pressure on young shoulders. <laughs> no pressure then. I mean, you, could, you can see it. His spatial awareness is second to none. He's always scanning, even before he gets the ball, scanning what's around him, taking pictures. Of, of, of the players that are around him so he knows when the ball comes to him there's no surprises that's what top players do especially in the middle of the park where you know you've got you've got to have 360 degree vision it's impossible so you have to turn you have to be on the swivel all the time Spain are going to have to make a change here I think the diminutive Jose Gallar looks in some discomfort off the pitch they're down to 10 men they have a free kick and it's angled out to Torres on the right hand side and Torres is through on goal here and Torres surely has sent Spain into the quarter-finals. A route one free kick. Controlled brilliantly on the corner of the penalty area. And all of a sudden, as he went one-on-one -on -one with Livakovic, Ferran Torres rolls it beyond the Croatia goalkeeper into the corner. Well, he scored with his first touch against Slovakia. He's in the goals once again. Ferran Torres and Spain are not going home yet from this European Championship. Croatia won, Spain three. It's absolutely brilliant. And again, from the Spanish side, you know, the ball goes dead. It's a free kick. Everyone's getting into position, taking their eye off the ball. They come alive. It's a fantastic crossfield ball. Defender doesn't cover himself in glory. Doesn't really do anything. He gets the first touch of his kind of midriff. Gets it out of his feet. Composes himself with his right foot to bring the angle open a little bit. And then with his left foot, side foot, nutmegs the goalkeeper. It's a brilliant finish and you would have to say 1-3, game over. Eight goals now in 15 caps for Ferran Torres. The Croatian defenders stand and ask questions of each other. They were down to 10 men, Spain. It was just a simple free kick over the top that Croatia failed to deal with. Well, at 2-1, it looked a long way back. At 3-1, surely it is too big a mountain even for this talented Croatia team. Spain are making more changes here. One of them in force, Jose Gaillard, replaced by Jordi Alba. And Koke is also making his way off. Fabian Ruiz, part of the Spanish side that won the under-21 European Championships in 2019, is on in midfield. Looking at the Alba now, Jordi Alba being rested. Is that a wise call? Because they've got the job done, they've rested one of the big players, and he's nice and fresh going into the quarterfinals. It's been comfortable, hasn't it, for Spain? Yeah, Bar that embarrassing own goal. Yeah, and I think you look at the attack, especially, you know, we, we spoke about it many times this evening, in Paris, it's not being in that lineup for Croatia. It takes away a lot of their artillery. Why would you play Jordi Alba when you don't need to, or you don't feel you need to? You can rest him, he can be fresh for the quarter fight. I think it's great, great managing by Luis Garcia. 
Budimir is coming on for Croatia as well. Ante Budimir replacing Mateo Kovacic of Chelsea. And Pesalac is on as well. Final roll for the dice. Pasalic replacing Vlasic for Croatia. They need two goals in the final 11 minutes or their tournament is over. Can they get them, Trevor Sinclair? I don't think so. I think uh, Spain have been too good. You know, two a man, individually, collectively. I think they've been outstanding. They've kept the ball superbly well. They've been clinical in the final third. Created a lot of opportunities. The work rate's been superb. And this man, Morata, he's not got his goal, but his, his link-up play and his work off the ball tirelessly, unselfishly for the team, has been second to none. He's been caught in the face there by Vida, Domagoy Vida. How much have they missed Diane Lovren alongside Vida at the heart of the defence? Just in terms of his experience? Yeah, probably a lot. You know, he's composed on the ball, um, he, he, he's got the height, he's, he's happy in, uh, to go and attack the first ball in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not ideal picking up a suspension, but I think this is the way this Croatian team have to play. Because they've not got the talented players that they may have had in yesteryear, they've had to get physical, they've had to leave their foot in now and again, and suspensions can happen. Free kick for Spain. Fabian Maruth, having just come off the bench, is going to play this in. Five yards in from the touchline, level with the penalty area, cleared and brought down by Jordi Alba. And you look at the options that Spain have had to bring off the bench as well compared mm. to Croatia. Well, we said that about the bigger nations with the, with the depth and quality in their squad. And you look at this Croatian team, without, again, without being disrespectful, there's a lot of young players that come onto the pitch. They haven't got that girth of experience and quality. We mentioned that on the Game Day podcast, which is available around about now, actually, looking ahead to England against Germany, live on TalkSport tomorrow at 5 o'clock, and the rest of the last 16, plus those quarter-final ties that have already been decided. You can download that podcast myself, Sam Matterface and Trevor Sinclair, via your usual podcast platforms. There's a good story about Trevor's dog as well, I won't give too much away. <laughs> oh, bless him, he's no longer with us. Croatia won Spain three. Croatia won't be with us in the European Championship for much longer. Unless they can score twice and force extra time in the final nine minutes. It's been a masterclass from Spain in terms of keeping possession and grinding down Croatia in the heat in Copenhagen. Yeah, at times it's exhibition stuff. Quickly, you know, you talk about bravery on the ball, you talk about technical ability, you talk about receiving the ball in tight areas. These Spanish players have done that in abundance today. How far could they go? I mean, it's a difficult quarter-final if France beats Switzerland later on talk sport. Well, it depends how good they can keep the ball against better quality players and teams because if, you're, if you've got 75% possession, it's difficult to beat a team who have 75% possession, especially if when they get the ball up to Morata, his hold-up plays are excellent like it has been today. So... Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting challenge for them playing against France. France have got all the tools, you know, they're clinical in the final third, they've got pace, they've got technical players, they've got combative players. And they've, I think they've got a lot of speed in the team as well, France. So, yeah, I think if anyone's going to give the Spanish team a real good test, and especially testing their philosophy and their principles of keeping the ball, it will be the France team. But there are signs, aren't there, even if they do lose to France in the quarterfinals, that Luis Enrique is building something for the yeah. future. Yeah. I replacing mean, some of those stalwarts of tournaments gone by. Absolutely. You know, we've mentioned a couple of players today already. You know, Busquets, he's not getting any younger, but he's done a superb job in the heart of that midfield for, for Spain. But the young boy, um, Pedri, I thought he's been outstanding. You know, he's been so composed. It's such a big game to play in. The last 16 knockout stage, he's been given the responsibility from his manager Louis Garcia again Sarabia you know he played his part in the early moments of the game he, he's probably the standout player in the first half young player Torres you know getting his goal and the impact that he's had in this game so there's a lot of young players coming through and as we know you know the Spanish team they had a problem with Covid before the tournament started they played the 21s and I know the, the opposition wasn't great but they put on an absolutely blinding performance and won the game very easily so you would say the future is bright for Spanish, for Spanish football and I think Luis Garcia has shown he's got the tactical awareness now to put teams out, put the right shape out to beat certain opposition. Croatia just in danger of you losing their discipline here. Duye Chaleta Sar has been booked for a poor challenge on Morata. I think he dragged him to the ground and then just kicked him with the right foot. <laughs> that will be a suspension as well for Chaleta Sar if 
Croatia can do the, I think it was another free kick into the penalty area. Or oh, Morata wanted it played in towards him. It was just lifted into the arms of the goalkeeper Olmo. by Olmo. If he takes that a little bit earlier, I don't think the keeper can get anywhere near it. He lets it bounce, which is fine, but take it earlier and get a little bit more loft on the ball. Good idea. This is a free, free kick again, though, down yeah. that left-hand side. Where I think Guardiola's had a good tournament, but twice in this second half, he just switched off. One led to a goal, one nearly led to a goal. It's not even the, it's not even the quality of the free kick. It's when the ball goes dead, come alive. And he's just switched off and the ball stopped play. When it's a, a set piece, he's just switched off and taking a breath. You can't take a breath. Because when you play with top players like this, they'll catch you out, they'll realise you're sleeping, and they'll put the ball oh, in the Here's areas. Modric, though. Inside the six-yard box, cuts it back. It's got to be turned home. Oh, my word! It's somehow, has it stayed out? Or have they given the goal? <laughs> I think the goal decision system has given a goal. Well, it was Budimir who certainly had a swipe at it. Kramaric was in there as well. It was great feat by Modric to get free on the byline, cut it back from just inside the six-yard box and the goal decision system has given Croatia a lifeline. Was it Budimir that crossed the line? In fact, I think it was a follow-up from Orsic. Either way, it's Croatia 2, Spain 3. Yeah, great feet, nimble feet from Modric, getting down towards the byline. He was on the angle, he couldn't shoot, he put it into an area where he's gone, someone get yourself a goal. In the end, not by design, probably by luck, they've ended up getting the finish. I think it's going to be AR because there may have been a handball in there anyway, but for me it was a good fit, a good goal and there was nothing in there. But I didn't see the ball go over the line, I have to say, Crookie, and it's a good job that the referee has got that technology on his on his wrist to tell him it was a goal. Mislav Orsic, tormentor of Tottenham in the Europa League, has given Croatia faint hope. Four minutes remaining. Croatia two, Spain three. Wow didn't expect this, I thought it was going to be so comfortable these nine minutes of the game for Spain but conceding like that now there's a little bit of jeopardy involved and goals change games you never know here's Vida for Croatia, one last push from the World Cup runners up to keep their European Championship dream alive and Orsic now in space down the left hand side, Budimir and Kramaric waiting in the centre, the cross is blocked, out for a Croatia throw they found that extra bit of adrenaline pressure, that extra bit of energy feeding off their supporters, feeding off that goal from Mislav Orsic, very much made by Modric. They are still in the tie. And you have to say the shape now, there's been so many substitutions from both sides. I think they're playing two defenders and eight attackers, Croatia, I can't work it out, here's Modric. Seeing it up on the edge of the area, Brozovic, urged to shoot by the Croatian fans, <laughs> ignores those cries and plays it out to his right hand side instead and Josip Brekelo Brekelo making his way towards the byline well defended by Ferran Torres his goal at the moment is going to be the one to send Spain through Pedri with a oh. daring run across his own 18 yard box and it was a sliding tackle by Budimir to stop him in his tracks and it's a free kick for Spain that's outstanding from the young man you know Pedri he's not got a pass on so he's forced to run with the ball rather than just punt it upfield and give possession back to the Croatians he's been forced to run with the ball he draws the foul and, and just eats up vital seconds for this Spanish team to try and get over the line and get to the 90 minutes winning the game 3-2 exceptional play from Pedri it was Cesar Afpela who thought he'd Denied Orsic that goal. Ball did cross the line. And Croatia still have hope here. Change for Spain. Mikel Ayafabel will be coming on to replace Torres for the final two minutes plus added on time. I think it will be significant added on time given all the subs. It's not over yet, Trevor Sinclair. It is not over. And, uh, you know, what, we've got two minutes to go plus time added on at the end. Croatia. It's a terrific tie. Croatia are going to put everything into this. 3-2, loads of goals. Some That's really what we good, wanted on talk sport. Some really good performances as well. Oh, your far ball. Dispossessed. Down the left-hand side by Guardiola for Croatia. Linking up with Orsic, who is a very tricky winger. As Tottenham will testify, just ran out of pitch on this occasion. And Spain have a throw. That better crater taking as long as he possibly can to get the game restarted. All of those Croatian supporters on their feet over on the far side. Telling him to hurry up. 
It's only the second time in 28 matches that Spain have conceded more than one goal since that Nations League defeat to Croatia. That was a 3-2 win for Croatia, a five-goal thriller as we're seeing in Copenhagen this evening. It wasn't really like they forged the chance themselves either, it was just like, I think again, a little bit of lack of concentration from the Spanish side. We've seen that with the opening goal with the goalkeeper, but then I think we've seen it with that second goal as well. Just switching off at the wrong time. Confirmation, by the way, of the news that we brought you on uh, White and Jordan this morning. Scott Parker has left Fulham by mutual consent this evening. And I can tell you he will be on his way to Bournemouth, their championship rivals. We expect that to be confirmed in the next 24, 48 hours. Meanwhile, Croatia have a minute plus stoppage time and they have a free kick inside their own half. Modric in a hurry. Don't often say that, but he's picked out Orsic with a delightful ball over to the left touch line. Orsic looks sharp, you know, he looks like he's come on, he's changed the game, he's got the goal. Well, the fans wanted him to start Orsic yeah. in place of Perisic, maybe. That was a mistake by Zlatko Dalic. Offside flag up against Brekulo. Can't happen. Cannot happen. Got to be onside there. Just stops the momentum of the game. Too eager to get in. You've got loads of space there, young man. Stay inside. Free kick for Spain with 20 seconds remaining. Luis Enrique pumped up on the touchline. We're about to find out how many added minutes there will be here on Talk Sport. The Spanish fans inside the parking stadium hold their breath. The Croatian supporters wolf whistling, trying to get Simon to hurry up with a free kick. Six wow. added minutes, Trevor Sinclair. Wow, that'll give them a boost. They'll feel they've got a chance. They're gonna, they're gonna create a chance. That's what they'll be thinking. We've got six minutes. It's not like it's two minutes where you, you're really in a rush. You've got six minutes. Be composed, get it into the right areas, get bodies up the field, and see if you can get back in this game. But the one thing we know about Spain is that they will keep possession, stick to the principles. And they've done that throughout the course of the 91 minutes we've played already. 3-2 they lead. And that goal from Orsic has set us up for a grandstand finish. Here is Livakovic, the Croatian goalkeeper, who smashes it outfield. Flicked on by Budimir. And there might be an opportunity here on the edge of the area for Kramaric on the volley. Having spotted Seaman off his line, fires it wide. He was offside anyway. Yeah, just couldn't stop himself from going offside. It's a good nod on. Uh, initially by Modric, he sees that his teammates in a, in a bit of space, he puts it into the space, but he's gone a little bit early, and then with the volley, it's bounced up nice for him. I mean, it's a, you have to say, it's a great defensive line as well by the Spanish. Just offside, isn't it? It's yeah. Finest of margins Good there. defending as well, look at the defender behind him, he's just held his run, makes sure, and then he snatches his shot anyway, and doesn't test the goalkeeper. Ferran Torres with a goal at the moment is going to put Spain into the quarterfinals of the European Championship unless Croatia can conjure one last big opportunity to show great character to still be in with a fighting chance and here's Orsic with a cross for the far side oh, it's an equaliser unbelievable in time and it on at the end of the game Pasalic with the header Croatia still alive in the European Championship Brilliant cross from Orsic, a fantastic header from Pasalic. Croatia 3, Spain 3, what you, a game in Copenhagen. I tell you what, you talk about the, the Croatian fans wanted Orsic to start, no wonder the impact that he's had on this game. He's come on, he's got himself a goal and then he's just put in the most superb cross into the box where Pasalic has got on the end of it with a death flick. The goalkeeper's got absolutely no chance. 3-3, three, three, game on. And we might just need the extra half an hour. We might just need penalties. Because Croatia, from 3-1 down, are back on level terms with a goal from Mario Pasalic, the former Chelsea man. Three minutes into added on time. Wild scenes of jubilation amongst those Croatian supporters and the technical area, area. Zlato Dalic jumping all over the place absolutely loving it brilliant ball I have to say though that's yeah. why we love football oh, that's I mean, why we love football 12 minutes ago they were down and out this game they were just seeing this game out well, there might still be time for a winner it added on time at the end of the game 
Morata plays it out the right hand side for Spain. He's tripped on the edge of the area. Morata, in the end, the shot sliced high over the crossbar from Olmo. And it's a goal kick for Croatia. It remains 3 3. You didn't have any plans for tonight, Trevor, did you? <laughs> I'm not getting home. Don't worry about that. Wow, what an end to this game. What an Absolutely this, what sensational. An end to and you have to say, the changes that Zlatko Dalic has made, he threw everybody yeah. on in this second half, has paid off the two subs <laughs> combining for the equaliser in stoppage time. On the flip side of that, I think Luis Enrique might be thinking he made the subs too early, bringing on so many bodies. You know, they were well in control before they made the changes. The atmosphere inside the park and stadium is absolutely electric now but here comes Spain and Olmo is free in the centre if only Farble can find him well defended by Croatia and by Chaleta Sar over on that left hand side it is a throw in and we're into the 95th minute 3-3 on talk sport Luis Enrique is down on his haunted inside the technical area he looks crestfallen yeah, he knows Spain had this game won a few minutes ago. Yeah, he'll, he'll be thinking about them substitutions that he's made. Did he make them too early? The game wasn't out of sight, obviously, because it's 3-3. Free free. What about the atmosphere these Croatian fans are conjuring? Their Spanish counterparts suddenly stunned into silence. And they'll, we've, they'll, we've only got a minute to go of stoppage time. There'll be the one or two that went early, regretting that now. Morata holds it up neatly midway inside the Croatian half. Is there one last opportunity? for Spain to win this game without extra time being required. Cheers and wolf whistles from the Croatian supporters as Ruiz plays it out to the right-hand side. After the equator, whose header at the start of the second half looked to have given Spain the platform for victory. Oh, your Fabel shoots off balance and wide. And that might just be the final meaningful action of normal time. Yeah, it opened up from there, about 23 yards out, just outside the 18-yard box, and yeah, he gets it all wrong. I think he's got a little bit of attention from one of the Croatian players. It may be a foul. The referee's let it go, but he gets his shot all wrong, and it goes harmlessly wide. You said to me at half-time, Spain will win this game, no question about that. I did. They went 3-1 up. You look like a smart cookie, <laughs> you don't look so smart now. <laughs> what a conclusion, what a game. This is why we love football, you know, the underdogs, they can come back through spirit and we do need an extra half an hour on talk sport because the full-time whistle is blown croatia with those two goals right at the end mislav orsic one sub giving them hope with the tapping given by the goal decision system with five minutes to play that after spain had stormed into a 3-1 lead and then mario patalic who had a pretty miserable time of it at chelsea with a brilliant header three minutes into stoppage time to keep Croatia in this tournament and who knows their towels are up Spain absolutely forlorn who knows what extra time will bring full time in Copenhagen Croatia 3 Spain 3 what a game and it would take a brave man to predict the outcome of this one into extra time in Copenhagen 3-3 three, three after 96 fascinating and enthralling minutes between these two. Spain, all in white, shooting from left to right. It was Croatia not ready to wave the white flag. Those two goals in the final five minutes plus added on time, taking us to the extra half an hour. They're all in black. They're attacking the goal away to our left. Luka Modric, as you were talking to Adrian Trevor, was at the centre of the Croatian huddle, mm. urging his teammates for one final push to get themselves into the quarter-finals. Listen, he's twice as old as Pedro. You know, he, this is probably going to be... It's certainly going to be his last Euros. Yeah. And it possibly could be his last major tournament. And he doesn't want to go out on a win in the last 16. What he's achieved in his, game, in, in, his, in his career, he wants to go out with a bang. And I think he was just getting the boys together, getting that spirit together, and telling the lads to go out there in the next 30 minutes and leave it all out there for the country, for the nation. Here's Orsic, what an impact he's had since coming off the bench. Picks it up down by the left corner flag, taking on Athpel Equator, one of the Spain goal scorers. Rolling it to the edge of the area, Kramaric. Kramaric shifts it away from Ruiz, crosses into the box. Might come for Orsic, shoots right front in, just over the bar. The goalkeeper sprawling to his left-hand side, wasn't going to get there. Unai Simon, who just sails over the crossbar and into the fans behind the goal. 
That's inches away. Yeah, brilliant play. I mean, again by Orsic, you know, he's got the ball, he's composed on the ball, he's threatening, he's looking like he's going to go down the outside. He chops in, plays it to one of his teammates, follows his run in, just marauds in, follows the ball in, it comes to him and he hits the ball on the volley with his side foot and he just can't get over the ball. That's a big opportunity though. France against Switzerland still to come tonight. That's half as entertaining as this one. And we will be in for quite the treat on talk sport. Here's Morata, barged over, or so he claims anyway, by Guardiola, the Turkish referee, unimpressed, and Guardiola has skipped into the Spain half, and he's been taken down by Busquets. It's a free kick for Croatia. Yeah, I thought I thought that was a good tackle. Got a little bit of a man, but he got, he got his foot on top of the ball and slid it away. Just sometimes things start going against you, these little decisions from the referee, and you start to get that belief. This could be our day. Well, they've had to ride their luck at times, Croatia. They've had to soak up an awful lot of pressure. They've had to do a lot of chasing off the ball. But they've stuck in the game. Even at 3-1 down, they kept believing. Zlatko Dalic made those positive changes. Modric began to grow an influence. And here we are, 3-3, into extra time, which we played three minutes in the first half. Just seems a little bit more composure about this Croatian performance at the moment. Modric epitomising that calmness. Forward it goes from Brozovic. Flicked over the top by Pasalic, whose equaliser has got us to this point right at the end of the game. Pills for handball. Whoa. Against Torres. Modric has played in England too long. And that was a ridiculous <laughs> challenge from Modric <laughs> with the... <laughs> Flying tackle, it's going to be a free kick for Spain. Oh, your father felt the force of it. What about the handball of Phil Trevor Singler? Yeah, and Pedri actually oh, was that's naughty, that from barged Modric. over by Modric. <laughs> I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, not for me. I've, I've just seen the replay. I didn't initially think it was handball. Very honest from the defender. Looked like he was going to get out muscled, stuck to his guns, and made sure he didn't lose out on that battle. It was a really really important that he didn't because he was on the just on the edge inside his own 18-yard box. If he loses that battle, physical battle I think the Croatian player forges a chance for himself second time in well, as many meetings that Croatia have scored three goals against Spain three was enough to beat them in the Nations League not today, 3-3 three, three. we've played five minutes in the first half of extra time just looking at that challenge from Modric who's 36, the boy that he's done in the Spanish team, Pedro, he's 18 half his age, I mean that is welcome to real football Big boy here's football. relief though for Spain Releasing all your Fabo down the right. Can he pick out Morata in the centre? No, well dealt with at the near post by Livakovic as all your Fabo just tried to lift the cross onto the head of Morata. He had plenty of time, all your Fabo as well. Execution not quite on point, but it's a safe pair of hands by Dominic Livakovic. And Zlatko Dalic just articulating, telling his players to calm down. Mm. Calm heads now. Everyone's tired. And here's Pasolic. Plays it out to the left-hand side and Orsic. Orsic, who's petrified these Spanish defenders. Running at the equator, across the face of goal. Pasolic couldn't turn it home. Brilliant save. Kramaric with the effort. Clawed away by Simon. Or Super save from Simon. Orsic, or Orsic, Orsic's been absolutely brilliant. He's come on there. It looks like he's coming inside. He's shot the defender. Stupid. Gone on the outside. Put a really good cross into the box on the floor. It's bounced out. Kramaric has got a score. He's, he's, he's seven yards out, it's on his right foot, he has got to score, it's a great save, but he shouldn't even give the goalkeeper a chance to get anywhere near that. Simon atoning for his own goal, seems a lifetime ago now <laughs> to give Croatia the lead, but Kramaric, a guilt-edged opportunity to put Croatia in front for the first time since that own goal. 3-3 the score, you're listening to Talk Sport with Alex Crook and Trevor Sinclair and here's Orsic again. It's like the Duracell bunny, isn't he? My just keeps God. running. And he's breezing away from Ruiz on this near side. They can't stop him. Oh, shit. It's been brilliant. Into Pasolic. 15 yards outside the penalty area. Kramaric is going to switch the play out to the right. Given away by Brekolo and Spain win it back in their left-back position. Here's Olmo now. He's been upended. Free kick for Spain right on the edge of the centre circle. Orchids is causing all kinds of problems. I mean, it's good defending at the far post. It's landed on his left side, Kramaric, seven yards out. His eyes would have lit up oh, when they tripped. Put your laces through that. 
here is Spain at the other end though Orma with a shot brilliant block Chaleta Saar right in front of the goalkeeper yeah great block Spain have a corner end to end now some tired legs out there a lot of opportunities being created who's going to blink first this is what tournament football is all about on Talk Sport this is why we love the European Championship both teams will fancy their chances it's excellent play with the back heel as well isn't it just to pick out his teammate again quite the last touch from the feeder, actually yeah quite fortuitous he's looking to go central in it's his back foot or else I think that's nestling in the back of the net it's really important it's a corner block. here but I think Anthony Equator is suggesting that well your father is going to take it that objects are being thrown onto the pitch by the Croatian fans we don't want to see that the corner is cleared away and it will be picked up by Afbel Equator inside the centre circle. 3-3 three, three the score. We played eight minutes in the first half of extra time. Penalties looming large, but I think we might just get a winner. It's too end to end, it's too open. Here's Ruiz for Spain. Luis Enrique might have to answer some serious questions about mm. his changes if Spain do get knocked out here. You won't think that. Here's Busquets. Still going strong. Playing it back to the halfway line. Well, you've got Orosic on this side, and he's against Aspilicueta. Who's, who's Pedri? Was he fouled young, by Modric? No, well timed with the tackle. Who's not a young man, so you would say every time Croatia get the ball, get it out here to Orosic and see if he can run the legs off. Says Aspilicueta. And he does look tired, Aspilicueta, mm. well, for a long season, humid conditions. And he's made a lot of forward overlapping runs as well. Here's Ruiz, though, for Spain, switching it to the right hand side, and Ormo. Ormo into the penalty area. Well defended. Archuleta Saar, Croatia just sitting deep here, Spain dominating possession, story of the game, <laughs> in many ways, here's Cesar Afbel Equator, those Croatian fans, many of them bare chested behind the goal, screaming their team on still, it's been quite the occasion in Copenhagen, here's Pau Torres well forward for Spain, into the feet of the teenager Pedri, out to the left hand side they just seem to regain some composure regain some control yeah. here Spain after totally losing their way at the end of normal time oh in fact well if they squeeze that through to oh yeah Farbel he would have been in Modric tries to clear it away but they just can't keep the ball Croatia at the moment another brilliant pass disguised by Busquets straight into looks like he's going wide and just reverses his foot plays it straight into the forwards feet he wastes the opportunity Olmo with a cross from the right hand side towards the far post Morata brings it down and he sends a left-footed volley crashing into the corner. Spain ahead again. Alvaro Morata silencing his critics in extra time. And is that the goal that will finally take Spain into the last day? Ah, Croatia three, Spain four. The defenders got caught under the ball. It's a fantastic bit of composure from Morata. I've been impressed with him all day you know he, he pulls off the defender I think it's the, the right back you can see that he's going to miss the right back his first touch with his right foot is superb and his second touch is outstanding he gets it out of his feet the finish is unstoppable it's an absolutely superb finish by Morata who for me has been excellent all day it's a net buster from Alvaro Morata who's had so much criticism over the course of this tournament lashes through the volley left footed no chance Livakovic and is the Croatian resistance finally broken in extra time 10 minutes into the first period Enrique jumping with joy again on the touchline leaps into the arms of Rodri I think was about to come on and Chris Fallen again Zlatko Dalic Croatia having worked so hard to take this game into extra time behind again in Copenhagen I think the forwards are on top I don't think that's, that's the end of the scoring in this game it's 20 minutes to go and the chances that are being created Rodri is on for Busquets fresh legs in midfield now for Spain the change that you and Adrian Durham were crying out for really in many ways Trevor Sinclair yeah I think Busquets he's, he's run his race he's, uh, he's been superb in possession but as the game's gone deeper into this and then into time added on and then extra time I think his legs have gone and he, it was a, it's an important change that Luis Enrique's made there I'm not sure that Zlatko Dalic has any more darts left to throw 
I'm pleased for Alvaro. You know, he's taken a lot of stick about the way he plays the game, and sometimes he doesn't come up with the goals. But he's been he's been outstanding today, and his all-round play for me has been excellent. Good play by Olmo as well, teeing up the opportunity. Yeah, good cross. finished emphatically by Morata. He is Orsic. As long as he's on the pitch, Croatia still have hope. Can't quite pick out Pasalic in the centre though, and it's cleared up field by Ruiz. Orsic wins it back on the edge of the area. It's Kramaric with a shot straight into the arms of Simon. Decent effort, the ball just bounced to him about 20, 22, 23 yards out. He's got his first touch out of his feet onto his right side. He's hit a low drive. Good keeping from the goalkeeper. You'd expect him to make it, but he's bubbling. We've seen, that, we've seen them cause problems, but he makes it stick. And his player's actually following in for the rebound. So it was important that he made it stick Almost as well. again at the other end, crosses into the centre. Chance for your fireball. That will do. That will do for Spain. Mikel Oyafarbal with his fifth international goal to make it Croatia 3, Spain 5. And surely this time there is no comeback for Croatia. I don't want to say anything because this game is already stupid, man. I mean, it's a, an, an excellent cross again from the right hand side. Oh, Farball, he's got the first touch out of his feet. Good movement, running in behind, testing the defence, and he's just put it into an area. Looks on side, I think it'll get a VAR check. The first touch of his left foot, he's good. He steps across it to protect the ball. Moves it with his right foot, finishes it with his left foot. It's great feet, under pressurised situation, loads of defenders around him, and it's a fantastic finish into the bottom left-hand corner. Well, we criticised Luis Enrique's decision-making from the bench, but again, it's the two substitutes who've combined here. Danny Olmo, creator of the fourth goal for Morata, creator again here, and finished by Aya Farbel. The Spanish players join with those on the sidelines in a huddle of celebration well they came back from two down at the end of normal time can they do it Croatia in extra time 5-3 to Spain I mean they love giving themselves a mountain to climb but I wouldn't put it past them you know they can get a bit of composure now get a bit of momentum create one or two chances and I would say get the ball out here to Rosic because he's certainly got the beating of Cesar Aspera if he gets the ball, it's getting the ball first because Spain have been quite greedy with it possession wise, they've had about 70% possession in this game What a start to extra time for Spain I'm going to get a paper Trevor <laughs> Me too <laughs> It is 5-3 isn't it, we'll just it confirm <laughs> It's one of those afternoons It's been brilliant isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's been so great entertainment yeah. Here's Olmo Good run again from him down the right-hand side for Spain. It's had quite the impact in extra time, Olmo. A little back heel there, mm. looking for Pedri, but it's run back by Pasalic. And then Morata dispossesses Guardiol. Morata into the area. Well defended, Vida. And then actually turns it back towards his own goal, but away from danger. And Morata denied what would have been his second in Spain, sixth. Do you yeah. remember when people said they couldn't score Spain? Yeah, exactly. Well, I said, you know, if they catch fire in front of goal, they have so much possession. If the goal scorers start getting clinical, they'll score a hatful against anyone. And that's the problem for France. You know, in the next round, presuming they do get over the line and get through this tie. They keep a lot of possession, and if they start being clinical in front of goal, they can cause anyone problems. There's yeah, still one more game to come here on Talk Sport this evening. France against Switzerland, kick off 45 minutes away. Mark Saggers, Jim Proudfoot, Stuart Pearce standing by to call that one. Morata had a good opportunity there. I know he's on the angle and, and the keepers closed the angles down, but... I he's think tried, he was shattered. He's, yeah, but he's tried a nutmeg, so that's even more work. Just toe poke it. Catch the keeper out. Get yourself another goal. Well, there's the whistle. Half time and extra time. Spain, who had this tie one in normal time before conceding those two late goals seemingly have it won again two goals in the first half of extra time Morata and Oya Farbal the substitute Croatia 3 Spain 5 surely this time it is all over and what an evening here on Talk Sport is there more drama still to come in the second half of extra time I think those Spain supporters inside the ground in <laughs> Copenhagen will be hoping not Luis Enrique will be hoping not, but 
They've done it once before, Croatia, in this game. Two goals down, seemingly going out with a whimper at the end of normal time. They somehow found it within themselves to get back on level terms, take us to the extra half an hour. Could they do it again? I think I think everything's with the Spanish. You know, you look at the... the we said that about Croatia at the end of the 90 minutes. Their style of play, keeping possession, just taking the sting out of the game, making good decisions on the ball, making sure you switch stuff out of possession. It's all to do, it certainly is for Croatia, but what a, what a, what a, what a game. How, how much incentive have them fans been given today in the stadium? Well, we are back off and underway for the final 15 minutes of extra time. Croatia 3, Spain 5 on Talk Sport. Spain all in white, shooting from right to left now. Here come Croatia though, and it's another chance, and it should have been another goal from Budimir. Right across the face of goal. Well, they carved Spain open there, straight from the restart. He just tried to guide that Budimir into the far corner. The goalkeeper was beaten just the wrong side of the post, Trevor. Oh, he's got to score. It's an absolutely brilliant slide rule pass down the left-hand side of the box, quite central. He gets there first on his left foot, and he screws it wide. It's a brilliant chance. If that goes in, we have got a game on. But that just shows how easy it is to create goals against the Spanish team or create chances against the Spanish team. It should be 5-4. Four, four, four. <laughs> you forgot the score there for a moment. I have. <laughs> it remains 5-3 to Spain, but Croatia making a really good fist of it at the start of the second period of extra time, and they've won a corner, and they've taken it quickly. Orsic is going to cross into the penalty area, blocked by Athel Equator. All hands on deck for Spain. They've seen 1-2 goal lead evaporate before their eyes already in this match. It's an absolute privilege to watch, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Livakovic with a long punt up field for Croatia. They seem to have found a second wind again. Here's Orsic attacking Apel Equator into the air. He's defended well there. Yeah. The fullback for Spain and clears it away to Olmo. And here's Morata. Skipping past a couple of challenges and only stopped in the end by Chaleta Saar on the halfway line. There's a lot of mistakes out there at the moment. There's tired minds, there's tired bodies. Yeah. Here's Rui driving towards the Croatian penalty area. A sixth goal for Spain and that would absolutely seal it. Rui forced back to Rodri. Rodri plays it down the line to Olmo. Right corner of that 18-yard box for Spain. Taking the goal away to our left. The end of the ground where the majority of the Spanish supporters are mustered. They won't forget this game in a hurry. Normal, Unai Sima on the ball now, his own goal <laughs> in the first half to give Croatia the lead. The start of what's turned into a goal spree in Copenhagen. Pal Torres back to Simon, who does look nervous every time the ball is played into his feet. Clears it out the right hand side and Apel Equator. And you think. Spain have the capability just to slow the game down and run run down the clock. Might be looking for a bit more than that. Playing it forward down this left-hand side. Brekulo forces the mistake and wins a throw in for Croatia. 18 minutes gone in extra time. Croatia 3, Spain 5 on Torx 4. It's Vida who pads it forward. For Croatia. In comes the sliding challenge from Oya Fabel on Modric. If this is to be his last game in a European Championship, certainly been a famous one to bow out. <laughs> Entertaining to say the least. I mean, they shout, they show great personality. I have to say, 3 1 down with minutes to go in normal time. And to get themselves back in this game is an achievement in itself. But then to do it again, I just think it's a challenge too much. We thought that with not long to go in the 90. They scored two goals, Croatia, in the final five minutes, plus added on time to take us to the extra half an hour. They need two goals again. But Spain keeping the ball well now. Oya Fabel out to the left-hand side. Just having Rodri in there, uh, making them angles. You know, fresh legs. This is his game. Very safe on, in possession will make all the angles to try and get his teammates out of trouble. It just gives the Croatians a, a bigger problem to try and win the ball back and, and try and get back in this game. Wolf whistles from the Croatian fans because 
Spain have got them just where they want them at the moment. That's a foul by Vida on Morata high up the pitch. Just looking at Pedri's first touch when he received the ball there from Morata. Again, you know, for an 18-year-old, his spatial awareness, he knows that he's got a player coming on him. He's chopping it back towards his own goal, and he looks like he solved that problem straight away. Even though the free kick was given, he'd already solved that problem. Been outstanding, the young boy. Morata hobbling away from the scene, but Spain have the free kick, and they played it back to Simon. All in orange, away to our right. Ten minutes of extra time remaining. Spain with his two-goal cushion. An eight-goal thriller in Denmark. It's a throw-in for Croatia. Vida comes across the near side to take it. Modric controls it neatly, then plays it back to halfway. Here's Vida again with the long blonde hair, chipping it towards the penalty area. Kramaric was up there. It's headed away by Paul Torres, and kept in play by the captain, Jordi Alba, for Spain. Here's Modric. Well, given away by Rodri and well won back by Ruiz. Stolen it away from Modric on the edge of the area. Here comes Spain on the counter. Danny Olmo down the right-hand side. He's got three white shirts ahead of him. Switches the play to Ruiz. Only Morata now inside that Croatian penalty area. Ruiz content just to keep the ball and play it back to Jordi Alba on halfway. Good game management this from Spain. Just keeping the ball. You know, probing in behind, getting runners in behind, securing possession and then recycling and, and, and making the pitch as big as possible. And looking after the ball, taking, taking care of your first touch, making angles for each other. This is how you manage a game. This is what they should have done at the end yeah. of uh, normal time. Yeah, but I think with the changes and everyone in, interchanging positions and formations, I just don't think the players knew where they were supposed to be. And when you make that amount of changes in that quick succession of time, it can confuse you, and that's what I think has happened to this Spanish side. But they'll learn from it, and so will Lu Louis Enrique. He'll learn from that as a young manager. It's a keep ball exercise now for Spain. There's not many teams you'd like to chase the ball less than Spain. I think Brazil, maybe. And it's in their DNA, isn't it? Yeah. Switched out to the right-hand side, and the uber-impressive Danny Olmo. Certainly made his mark since coming off the bench, and maybe has given Luis Enrique a selection dilemma for the quarter-final. Spain, if they can see this out, will play the winners of France against Switzerland. That's coming up live on TalkSport at 8 o'clock this evening. Not much to follow, then. <laughs> <laughs> this was supposed to be the warm-up act, I think. <laughs> wow. Here's, here's Ruiz for Spain. Tall, rangy midfielder. Plays it back to Jordi Alba. Now Torres, again testing the uh, footwork of the goalkeeper. We didn't really want that seam on. He plays it out the left-hand side. Back to Paul Torres. Does well. And then Torres infield to Pedri. Lovely floated pass over the top for Alba. Plays it against Vida. The whistle has blown, and I think it's a handball against Vida. Yeah, I think Vida knew what he was doing. There's not much he can do with his arm there, but he knew if that ball was played inside that they were in trouble of conceding another, or in risk of conceding another goal. I wonder if this is a symbolic moment for Croatia. Luka Modric has just handed over the captain's armband, and he's making his way off. Replaced by Luka Ivanušić. Is this... Mm, the last act of a glittering international career we will find out no doubt in the coming days Vida meanwhile has taken over that armband would you make of that Trevor Sinclair? yeah potentially um, I wouldn't like to read too much into it but he's put a great stint in again as always been composed on the ball didn't really see much of it first half but second half especially when Croatia started showing a little bit more ability and composure on the ball and keeping the ball he was one of the men that opened it up and he was a big part to do with the played a big part in the, the second goal that Croatia scored to get themselves right back in this tie 5-3 Spain lead that we played 24 minutes of extra time those two goals in the first period really took the wind out of Croatian sails Morata and Oya Farbel with what looked like the decisive moments at the end of a scintillating couple of hours on talk sport wolf whistles again from the Croatian supporters who are still 
living in hope that their team can do what they did at the end of normal time and somehow find two quick fire goals here's Olmo though down the right hand side for Spain in the pink footwear just slows the game down the RB Leipzig midfielder They're in total control here Spain yeah managing this game superbly well I think the manager will be proud of the way that they've managed extra time and again self-reflection he might look at himself and feel he could have done better things in the latter stages of the 90. Long punt upfield to Morata. In behind Gilletta Saar. Morata with a left-footed shot. Good save. Livakovic narrowed the angle at the near post and diverts it behind for a corner. Morata's claiming he was caught late as well. Just being helped to his feet by the referee. Well, that's excellent goalkeeping. Yeah. So Parry the ball into the side netting. Livakovic, great save. Got his angles all right narrowed the angle and made himself big stayed on his feet Morata not happy with a follow-up challenge from Chaleta Saar yeah it's a poor challenge again one of them that can just give you a dead leg late in the game you know you want to keep yourself as fresh as possible for the quarterfinals the expression on the face of Zlatko Dalic the Croatia manager that suggests he knows their race is run short corner to be taken by Olmo for Spain down this left hand side gets it back from Jordi Alba, Olmo into the penalty area, but in no real hurry to cross the ball. Collected by Rodri just outside the box. And they go all the way back Spain to the halfway line, and the clock ticks into the final four minutes, plus added on time at the end of extra time here on TalkSport. Still yeah. those Croatia fans making plenty of noise. Yeah, they've been brilliant, the fans. And so have the players, you know, they've given everything. I think it's just a, a bit of class difference between the two sides technically and Spain are deserved winners yeah as much as we will praise Croatia for the way they got back into the game they really should have won the game in normal time yeah. Spain yeah and, and credit again you know to the Croatians finding that little bit of extra spirit to get themselves get back in the game I think obviously the goal that Modric set up which was uh, goal line technology because we weren't sure we'd cross the line give them a real boost and then with the introduction of uh, all six down the left hand side who brought real energy and quality to the Croatian attacking line which they've been void of for, for the last parts of this game I thought that inspired the teammates he inspired his teammates to give that little bit more and, and give them a little bit of belief that they could get back into this time I'll tell you what I hope England Germany isn't quite as heart stopping as this oh tomorrow at Talk Sport <laughs> well, I'm not sure the nation can deal with it no five o'clock kick off at Wembley that's followed on TalkSport 2 by Sweden against Ukraine. One more match still to come this evening. France, Switzerland. We have two and a half minutes remaining at the end of extra time. Luis Enrico has been through the ringer. The Spain <laughs> coach is still urging his team forward. Still relaying his final instructions. And if Croatia could get a goal now, that would set the Spanish nerves jangling. It certainly would. Forward it goes, out this right-hand side, and Brecolo brings it down the edge of the area. Brecolo crosses over the head of everybody in black, and the goalkeeper, Simon, bravely yeah. collapses over the top of the ball, dived at the feet there of Chaleta Sarri, who's been sent forward, the big centre-back as an additional centre-forward. Yeah, I wouldn't have fancied that one. When you get a centre-half when you get a centre half in them areas of the pitch, they can go into challenge that maybe they shouldn't be going in for, and, yeah... He kept his nerve there. Jordi Alba into Aya Farwell in space. Inside the centre circle. Switches it out to Olmo down the right-hand side for Spain. Looking for Morata in the centre. Stabbed clear by Chaleta Saar. Elected by Olmo once again down by the right corner flag. 90 seconds now Spain away from progression to the last eight. Picked up by... Jordi Alba just inside the Croatian half of the field. The possession stats in extra time heavily weighted in Spain's favour. They've done a really good job of stifling that Croatian threat and just keeping the ball away from their opponents. Yeah, Rodri's just been caught there again. Pedri, should I say, the young boy, 26. Battered and bruised in this game. You know, they've tried to intimidate the young man. But he's stuck to his principles. He's been brave on the ball. And he's been a real thorn in this Croatian side all afternoon. Here is Alba, the captain for Spain. Didn't start the game, but has certainly 
had an impact from the bench and here's Morata again he sent clear inside the penalty area oh your father to Olmo can he get a shot off Olmo oh he's hit the post with the left foot and the follow-up effort from Oya Fabel is blocked superbly by Guardiol. Spain inches away from a six. Here's Ruiz inside the area, right foot curler and wide. Yeah, a lot of tired legs out there, isn't there? But I can't tell you the influence that this young boy Pedri again. He's waiting a pass there for the through ball. I think the shot should have been taken. It was open. He was on his right foot. He decided to pass it. It's a, it's a great effort. He's opened up onto his left foot. Tried to bend it inside that left post and it's hit the post and bounced back into play I mean they're out of sight anyway but they could have enhanced the scoreline even more then one added minute at the end of extra time even with the Croatian powers of recovery two goals in that one minute is asking an awful lot Spain leading by five goals to three here on Talk Sport and here's Rodri over the halfway line into Morata was he offside Morata the flag stays down he's been forced wide by Vida shoots left footed into the side netting and now the flag goes up for a free kick for Croatia yeah just went a little bit easy early good feet again you know he's shown great fitness as well Morata being that sole man up front on his own playing that number nine it can be lonely and you can be isolated in that position but he's worked his socks off he's had intelligent movement to receive the ball he's been brave in possession he's been strong in possession he's been whacked all over the place to be honest but he stuck to his task and he's been a he's been a great asset to this spanish team the spanish coaches and substitutes ready to celebrate there is the full-time whistle bringing to an end an incredible night of drama in copenhagen the spanish supporters beaming with delight after a game that simply had it all a comedy own goal a passing masterclass at times from spain and a stirring fight back from croatia with two goals in the final five minutes plus added time at the end of the 90 from orsic and pasalic to take us to an extra half an hour that after spain had cancelled out the own goal from simon with strikes from Sarabia, a header from Afil Equator, and a goal from Ferran Torres that looked to have won the match before that amazing show of spirit from Croatia. But two goals in extra time, the match maligned, Alvaro Morata with a first, and then Oya Fabel wrapping up the win for Spain. It is they who progress to a quarter-final showdown with either France or Switzerland in St. Petersburg. But how do we start to sum that up? Croatia 3, Spain 5.